Lost in the script TV episode 40. Late again, <sighs> didn't start at five o'clock again today, y'all. Just can't get shit in order. Some people have to wash their hair before they can don't start shooting the damn podcast. But that's needless to say, before we jump into it, Friday night, <laughs> I would say the last 25 minutes of us shooting. I started getting chills and a fever. I was like, what the fuck is going on with me? Yeah. Needless to say, that whole night I was up. I don't have COVID-19. Uh, let me tell you. Allegedly. No, I don't have no fucking COVID-19. I have felt like shit for a whole week. So, what, the, what were your symptoms? <laughs> what? What were your symptoms? That's none of their business what my symptoms are, but oh, I don't okay, have no fucking yeah, COVID-19. Right, okay. So yeah, Continue. shit went down the last twenty seconds, last twenty minutes of us doing the video. I tried to hear it from pops with fucking airborne emergency. That shit didn't do nothing this time. Uh -uh. <laughs> didn't do nothing. So uh, if you hear a little <coughs> coughs and stuff, yeah, a nigga out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, we got a packed show. It wasn't. It was not a. Uh, <laughs> was not a boring week. It was not. It's a whole lot of shit to unpack. A lot of stuff going on. We're going to go into some deep stuff, some geopolitical. Talk about a lot of deeper stuff. We're going to start with something tragic. Um, just because when I first heard about the story. Yeah, I asked you. I said, was it black people? Or you was like, no. I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't say no. I said, you I said no. It's a whole bunch of white folks what? standing around. So you assumed. When we watched the news uh, cast, the people in the neighborhood were all white. So I didn't know. Well, everybody that died was black. So the details came out about the story, and I'm pretty sure you've heard about it. The case, um, horrific conditions identified in the apartments before deadly Bronx fire. There was a fire in the Bronx in New York that killed, uh, as you can see right here, at least 17 people, including eight children. Yeah, that's Paris pretty sad. Paris Sunday after a space heater sparked a fire that flooded the 19-story complex at 333 East 18th Street with deadly smoke. 333? Pause. It's pause. Now, if you remember, was that last year or the year before? I think last year. If you remember, there was a big fire to an apartment building in the UK that killed a couple pe uh, a lot of people. I think it was way more than this. I want to say it was like 70 people. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's the one they kept talking about. No. It was in the UK. It was Florida. No, no. The one I'm talking about was in the UK. Oh. Remember, there was a one that happened in there Florida, There was one too. in Florida. You're right. <laughs> there was one in Florida as well, but it wasn't a fire. It was a uh, earthquake. Yeah, there was an earthquake. No. Yeah, it was an earthquake. No, the it, building collapsed. I'm sorry. Yeah, the building collapsed. I'm sorry. It wasn't an earthquake. The building just collapsed. Um, But there was also a fire in... um. In a, in a building in the UK that killed a bunch of people. All I'm going to say is these things are not uh, random. You can look into that look into that fire in the UK and how there was warnings. Uh, the building code wasn't up to par. The same with this building. Um, they were in this building. It wasn't up to date. Um, a lot of it was out of... It should They shouldn't have been there because... Um, it really wasn't, hold on. They really shouldn't have been there because it was, there was faulty stuff all around the building. Mold, um, anything that can lead to a possible fire was in this building. Uh, the, in the article, they they, um, they said busted smoke alarms, broken ovens, mold, and mal uh, uh, malfunctioning exhaust fans. Those are among the horrid identified uh, by city inspectors during recent reviews of apartments in the Bronx housing tower before it became the scene of the deadliest fire 
in a generation in New York City. Records reviewed by the Post Show. So they were supposed to have that uh, service. Exactly. They This was already out of code. It must have already been dealt with. But it didn't do nothing because these landlords of these apartment buildings, a lot of times, if especially if it's a place, I don't know if this was, but it seems like it probably was if it had all those problems, low-income housing. Which is typically where black people Exactly. So they reside. just don't care. They look at it as easy money. They, they create these uh, apartment buildings, make it low income, and just collect the money. They don't come fix nothing at all. Um, and they build they build these low income apartments cheap. They build it with wood. They hair it up and throw it together. Throw it together, yep. When you see a good apartment place build, normally it, they start off with steel, exactly. concrete. Exactly. When you see wood, <laughs> that lets you know that <laughs> shit is low flimsy income. as hell. They're not looking to ask you reinforce anything. The, uh, the decrepit conditions were documented and ordered, uh, and ordered fixed by the New York City Housing Authority, which was taxed by federal regulations with inspecting 12 of the 120 units in the building because it provided those tenants with rent vouchers. You see? They weren't paying, so they don't care as much. When I moved here 30 years ago, the building was nice. For the first five years, the maintenance has been lousy. I mean, for the last five years, the maintenance has been lousy says 69-year-old Tashia Jacobs. Tashina Jacobs, what? The the maintenance <laughs> for the past... Uh, two years. Two, we we're going to say three years. Yeah. We're going on three years. Since COVID has started, maintenance has been lousy. <laughs> uh, the... I would say the leasing office has completely shut themselves off from the building. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm subscribing this. I'm saying this from somebody who's telling me their experience. Uh, They're saying that the main is the the leasing office has literally shut themselves off from residents. Like they'll do anything. They'll say, "Oh, the office is closed because of COVID nineteen. Yeah, like there's an uptick now <laughs> at uh, Amaricon, and now so they were telling me, "Oh, they they closed, but they, they're they're closing the leasing office again because there's an uptick." Yeah, and the Amarcon, uh, yeah, variant now. So they just don't want to do their fucking job. That's all it is. So they said for the past five years for them. So, um, uh, you see here it said, uh, the, who lives on the fifteenth floor? The building is full of rats and mice. The smell of dead rats was so overpowering you couldn't breathe. Five of the apartments, nearly half of those checked, failed. NYC's inspection, which took place between twenty nineteen and twenty twenty one. Two of the units were on the third floor, the same as the apartment where, where the fire sparked by the space heater broke out. In unit three, inspector found no smoke or carbon monoxide detectors. The living room doors plates were broken, and, and uh, as as was the storage cabinet, while mold was growing on the ceiling, and there was evidence of lead in the paint of the wall hallway walls. So this place was shit show. Nearly, um, no one no one should have lived there. Obviously. They didn't take care of it. The maintenance had already gave up on the building. Um, it's a sad case of what's becoming normal here in America. <laughs> the and the entire infrastructure of America has. I would make an. I can make an upgraded. argument. I can make an argument. America is about forty years behind <laughs> as far as their infrastructure. Like they always compare America to like Taiwan and China, who already got. Light rails, like light rails is like, oh, but America is just, <laughs> there are cities that are but, just now getting light rail. Yeah, but China is known for putting up buildings in a day, and that shit don't be stable. Well, it'd be stable enough for them. Yeah, there, there's a couple of videos that have come out of buildings leaning over, about to tilt, fall on folks because the building was not properly built. Okay. The face of the Bronx fire, but here, here are the people. Uh, it's unfortunate. The obviously anybody's death is bad, especially in a situation like this. But the children is even the saddest ones. Um, a lot of these people were uh, Muslim, so there are a lot of their uh, funerals will be held at a Muslim a mosque a mosque. So uh, rest in peace to the, to these people. <sighs> now, I, like as I was about to get to. The infrastructure of America is so far behind that these things can actually happen. This should not even be happening. Like we're not even talking about stuff. Like we keep you hear people bring up places like um, Flint, Michigan. Flint is one of no, <laughs> dozens. That, that video that we 
uh, talked about was it mobile? Yeah, Mobile Alabama. Mo- the mobile woman Alabama. they had no sewage tank. Yeah. They had a that their, their sewage just went. Their their their, their septic tanks are not developed. They, had, they just went to the yard. It literally yeah. goes out to like a little little pond. Yeah, in the woods. And they were being charged because they couldn't afford to repl- have one implement uh implement into their uh their uh, trailer. Well, yeah, but it's because, too expensive. It's Fifteen thousand yeah. dollars. They don't have the, the government money. does. They don't provide that in uh, Alabama. Well, the, yeah, the state. The yeah. state. The I think they're one of the few uh, states that don't do that. Yeah, but that, Alabama is known for being uh, majority poor. black. Yeah, and poor. So what a coincidence that the state where majority black people are, they, they don't, don't yeah. do that. Yeah, that that video of that woman. I, I think we had to edit that part out because sixty minutes lagged it. But that video nearly brought me to tears. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it brought like me to tears. That you black woman. My voice just yeah, yeah. it was sad. That black woman uh, expressing. <sighs> Yeah, it's unfortunate. Expressing but, uh, what we express 24-7, seven days a week. Yeah. So uh, rest in peace to them. I I don't know if there's a possibility that this can be seen as neglect. Oh, that's the, neglect. By the apartment. So I, I would imagine lawsuits, lawsuits will be brought to them, saying how they would, the maintenance was behind and all that other well, stuff. Well, you could also, if uh, if the inspector did not do anything, Yeah, if the inspection guy did not put out proper information, you may be able to sue the the state. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. The inspector. Yeah, so maybe he should have condemned that. He should have said this is not livable. So you have the owner of the building, the inspector, inspector and the state. maintenance. Oh yeah, so yeah, I would imagine lawsuits would go out. So, but all right, um, move on to the next topic. Now, this is a people can start an old story because we already talked about this i think that was like episode 11 the haitian president when he was uh assassinated and we talked about the strangeness around the assassination so the haitian president was assassinated by a group of colombians i think it was 12 colombians or something like that mm-hmm. and it was two haitians involved three. Two haitian american three haitian americans who had uh organizations in haiti for uh humanitarian all this stuff. And it just so had, we pointed out that the, the person who, the director of the CIA had visited <laughs> Columbia mm-hmm. a week before the assassinations or something like that yeah. within, within that time frame. We also talked about when the, the Haitian president was assassinated. Not only was he shot in, a, in the bed with his wife, his eyeball was taken and we asked the question, what was his eyeball taken for? Was that a key that unlocked something? Unlocked some type of safe or something? or something? Now, the Haitian president was in a lot of uh, back and forth because he was voted into office in 2016, but he wasn't able to start serving his time until 2017. So while people were saying his time in office should have been done in 2020, he wanted to serve till 2021 because he didn't start serving till 20, I mean, uh, 2017. And he had not given any of his citizens vaccines exactly he, he, he was not put they didn't have any vaccines and the second he was assassinated they, got they started shipping vaccines yep. also there was a deal he had i think with um and what country was that he had an oil deal with venezuela yeah and it was it was worth a lot of money because haiti has oil too haiti had haiti possibly has the most oil in the world at least up there and they had an oil deal with Venezuela, but the money from that deal disappeared. So when his eyeball was taken after his assassination, people were wondering, is that used to get the money? Is that for something else? People were saying he got shot so much, his eyeball just popped out. I don't believe that. I don't believe that either. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of weird stuff going around that. And obviously, when you say Haiti... <laughs> You know who comes up in your head? The Clintons. The Clintons. Particularly. So, so now Hillary. we hear, we saw when they deported those Haitians from the border, they sent them back to Haiti. We did, they just got recently asked about that at the White House. And they said, we have diplomats on the ground in Haiti who are trusted leaders. Mm-hmm. And you go trusted, that means people you putting in power. It's interesting. The, dep- the, uh, secretary, the deputy secretary, Jen Psaki's, uh Yeah. She didn't mention it one time. Mm-mm. She's Haitian. Yep. 
Are you talking about the woman, her her deputy secretary? Yeah, yeah, the woman who worked on. Yeah, she's a, she's Haitian, and uh, they don't really bring it up much. But now I'm going to show you this. It has finally been brought up. We already said it. Go back and watch that video. We broke it. We already said we we put all the pieces together. America was already in Haiti in the early 1900s, just taking the gold and money. Yeah. So we already know the history of America and Haiti. They have now, New York Times, <laughs> have finally released, to try to hide it, but it was brought out by this guy, that they had something, or at least they okayed the assassination. They knew of the plot, which we already knew. So let me just play what he had to say. Well, the New York Times yesterday published an explosive revelation reporting that a main financier of the assassination of the Haitian president only got involved in the operation because he was reliably informed that it had the support of the United States. But you probably didn't hear anything about that because, well, it's Haiti, but also because the Times buried it in paragraph, let's count, one, two, three, four, five, keep going, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 12, 13, 14, 15, keep going, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, keep going, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 20, skip, keep going, 26, 27, 28, keep going, keep going, yep, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep going, keep going. I, you can go back and count yourself if I lost count. 29, there it is. Okay, stop, stop on that one. Paragraph 29, here it is. He said he agreed to join the conspiracy because he was told by Mr. Badiot and other plotters that it had the full support of the United States, which, according to them, was getting nervous about the president's supposed links to terrorists and drug traffickers. Quote, if the U.S. government was involved, then it was safe said Mr. Jar, outlining the th his thinking at the time. So that's awfully big news for the New York Times to find fit to print. It's also not at all out of the question. In September, the prosecutor assigned to investigate the assassination announced that the prime minister, Ariel Henry, had had multiple phone calls with Joseph Felix Badio not long after the assassination. Badio is a former uh, Haitian government official alleged to have overseen the operation. Henri responded to the prosecutor's claims by ordering the man's boss to fire him. When he refused, Henri fired them both. In the wake of that purge and the news that he was suspected in the assassination himself, the United States stood by Henri, even though he had basically no legal claim to actually run Haiti. After the U.S. stood by Henri, even after the firing of the prosecutor, the U.S. envoy to Haiti, Daniel Foote, resigned in protest in late. So, now they, <laughs> they... They buried it and they put it all the way in paragraph 29? Yes. But another part of that is, they said it, he said that America was okay with it. I think it's a little bit more than America was okay with it. I would imagine America has something to Then why do did they act it? surprised? Who do you mean? They, uh, they acted surprised like they didn't know uh, they were putting the pieces to puzzle together. Remember, uh, Joe Biden said, you know, he really didn't want to get involved yeah. with Haiti unless the American citizens well, yeah, that's were okay when, with it. That's when people was asking, are they going to send troops? Yeah. And you had a lot of the Haitian people saying, no, don't send troops. They, uh, According to what I've seen, a lot more Haitian people were against that president. Um, they said he was corrupt. I remember I brought up the money with the Venezuelan oil, oil deal. But let me say this. <laughs> I'm not saying that if America is against somebody, that means they're probably not as corrupt as you think, but he probably wasn't as corrupt <laughs> as he was out to be. I'm not saying he was perfect. He may if have been America a thief. If America wants to take you out, that means that they you're not in their best, you're interest. not doing something in their best interest. Exactly. And you need to go. So I'm not saying he wasn't a possible thief. I was, I'm not saying he was a power hungry person. But I'm saying he probably wasn't willing to do things that America wanted him to do. Because America don't fuck with Venezuela either. Exactly. America been putting sanctions on them as well. So they see those two coming as together, together as their enemy. As a problem. So uh, we know we know since 2010 earthquake, America, they, they've had their hands on Haiti since Haiti got their <laughs> independence. They've been on their head for the longest. They put sanctions on them. They've done everything they can. But especially since 2010 earthquake, they've been deep 
in Haiti. And I think that was a a man made earthquake. Harp. Harp. We we know that's a real thing. Man then another earthquake hit them uh last year. Yeah. And it didn't hit <laughs> Dominican Republic. It never hits the Dominican Republic. It never Republic. hit them. It never hit the spices. It always <laughs> hits the uh the darkies. The darkies. That's not us being the mark derogatory, by the way. That's just Man, I'm black. <laughs> they know what I'm saying. I'm not trying to uh no. Demean them. I'm just making sure because you know. Shit. Shit taken out of context. But no, that's something we... they are intentionally trying to hurt the Haitian people. Exactly. So are we gonna go on to another story? Something a little bit I wouldn't say lighter. <laughs> it's a pretty uh messed up story as well, but it's not as uh political. Here we go. Trey Songs denies he raped or assaulted ex UNLV basketball player Dylan Gonzalez in Vegas calls her a liar. <sighs> All right. Trey Songs accused of sexual assault by basketball player Dylan Gonzalez. Now, I remember this uh, woman. She's a basketball player. She ended up, I think it was her, and I, I remember it was a. Uh, twins or something like that who play basketball and they turn to I guess you would call it uh, internet influencers so she's saying well I'll just read what they said artist and former uni- uh, University of Nevada Las Vegas basketball star Dylan Gonzalez she's an artist she is an artist what kind of artist just wait has come forward claiming that Trey Songs assaulted her and caused her unbearable PTSD she also was hired, has hired an attorney to represent her in a potential case against the singer. In a statement shared to Instagram on Tuesday, January 11, Gonzalez wrote, with what seems like endless and recurring news of the alleged sexual assaults committed by Trey Songs, I am forced to repeatedly, repeatedly relive in my mind and suffer anew the long suppressed horror and unbearable PTSD of my assault by his uh, very hands at a, <clears throat> at a very well known Las Vegas hotel her post continued by sending love strength and hope to all who are victims of assault and is of fatal nature you are not alone uh gonzalez also encountered uh encouraged victims of assault uh, to come forward suppression of our voices only emboldens our oppressors and you cannot heal what you do not reveal after requesting privacy she went on to say you know she said let's go to her lawyer now she tweeted huh she put all that stuff out there and then she requested privacy. Just hold on. Now, she, this was on January 11th, but <laughs> on her Twitter account back in December 30th, she tweeted <laughs> this. Trey Songs is a, as you can see, Lord forgive me. I couldn't hold that in another year. See you in 2022. So this was her letting it be known that she's going to come out with a formal allegation or accusation, I'm sorry. And then in she's 2022, still having to throw up the. Just hold on, I, just hold on, because you're ready to go. A Trey uh, Songz representative has denied the accusations. What? By the way, this is off topic a little bit. Uh, whatever happened with the Ti Tiny allegations? We we covered that. Too. Ti said, "Let that shit go." We t- we covered that too. <laughs> we. Ti yeah, said, "This is Trey Songz. It, it ain't Ti." I'm just saying we covered that. <laughs> we got like three videos on that. Uh, whatever happened to that situation? It's but, some bad people. Uh, as a Trey Song rep has denied the uh, accusations, telling TMZ Trey and his team are confident in the legal process and that there will be an abundance of exonerating information to come over the next few weeks. A representative of Song's label, Atlanta Records, had no comment when reached by Billboard. Gonzalez's statement is not the first sexual assault allegations uh, against Songs. In November, he was a subjected to a assault. Investigation again in Las Vegas following an incident with a hospital in the after they celebrated his 37th birthday. Uh, back in 2017, Kiki Palmer detailed her own difficult encounter with songs in a passionate video. Palmer claimed he tricked her into being in a music video while at a party in Miami, alleging that she'd hid in the closet to avoid being filmed, only to let her find out that songs and his friends had taken a video of her without her permission. In a future interview, she claimed the singer was guilty of using sexual intimidation. And coercing her into the video. I didn't know what that meant. I know what it means when you say somebody, uh, physical intimidation, they're going to be threatening to hurt you. So what is sexual intimidation? Is he saying he was threatening to assault her sexually? If she didn't get in the video? 
um, models, feeling of power, whatever, whatever. So he's been accused of this a couple of times. All right. We got some of the details. Trey Songz has been accused of this about three, four times. I know why they put this out about Trey, Mr. Trey Songs. Okay, give me your theory. Go. Uh, Mr. Trey Songs has a lot of other rumors are out there about him regarding, you know. His sexuality. And I think they do this to make it seem like he is a ladies man who just. Uh, well, he's not really considered a lazy man. ladies man if they're out accusing him of this. No, a, not a ladies man as far as. Loved. Loved. But just out here, he's a sexual deviant. deviant. Yeah. So he likes women. Yeah. So that's why I think they keep. So him you in think the news they would that. rather? See, you think they would rather him be seen as a sexual deviant than homosexual? Yeah. For maybe, maybe it's him. You think he would rather be seen that way? Yeah. Because he's not, you know. Well, all the cases he's either settled or he has uh, won, as in is thrown out. Of course, it's a script. Hmm. I will What's your theory? So she, she tweeted in December 30th, which let us know she was going to say something in 2022. So she had already let it be known. I'm going to reveal this. So she then does this early January. And according to what I've seen, this is a civil suit, not a criminal. Money. So out of this, only two, the worst thing that could happen is he has to pay her money. Even... I wouldn't say the best for him. The worst for him, he got to pay money. The best for him is this gets thrown out, but is he still another allegation? Exactly. And people are going to be like, damn, Trey Song keep getting these allegations. Let me, uh, now, let me say this. It's like get, R. Kelly. If you were famous, if you're a person who get accused of this and nobody knows you or that person, I think most people lean towards the woman. Like, what? What the hell? Is she accusing you of this, that, or that? And then, uh, you know. And then you might get the details and you come to your own conclusion. But then there's the famous people. When a famous person is accused of this, most people, and that's just being honest, go, mm, they, I got to hear the details of the circumstances and how would he be in a situation where that isn't, that's possible. I think was. Hold maybe, on. Let me, hold on. But once you get accused twice, <laughs> three times, <laughs> four times. Okay. Now it's like, all right. Now we saw what happened with Bill Cosby. How every, this boom, it ended up being 40 women. So now we're seeing this power in numbers. Now I'm not saying it's not possible. We know there was a guy named uh, what's his name? There was an ex football player who was on a uh, football network. His name was Sharp, Donovan Sharp, something like that. He actually was a dude who was going around in nightclubs, dropping stuff in women's drinks and taking them to hotel rooms and abusing them. That he was doing that. He pleaded guilty. He's in prison right now. But it does seem strange when a person gets accused of that and they. Don't go to jail. It's yeah. like, how are you getting accused four? Like, on one hand, if you get accused four times, it's like, oh, what's going on? But if you get accused four times and nothing happens, yeah, it's like, what am I supposed to do? So now you get accused again, I'm going to say, oh, here go another one. Yeah, that, and that's the problem. People are being desensitized. It's like, when she came out and said, I was like, oh, here we go, another one. That's just how it's going. And it's not being, you know, in sensitive some people's ways. Because some people have actually been sexually exactly. assaulted and, and we do know. wait later on in life to come out. But it's like, damn, we at a point where it's okay to come out and, and tell your story, especially exactly. if you're telling the truth, because it, this been going on for what? Ten years now? What do you mean? Like, like uh, Me Too? Yeah, the Me Too. I'm not no, I'm not I'm not like, talking about like the Me Too, but in general. people constantly coming out saying how they've been sexually assaulted well, that's me by too. Yeah, by these uh, celebrities or about whatnot. 20, so that'd be like 2015, 2016. So you don't have to wait three, four, five, six, seven years. And some people are going to say, well, you can't tell somebody a victim when to come out. And, I, I you know, can't. But I, I was, can't, but I'm going to tell you what. You can't tell me how to feel about to your feel allegations about seven years later. Now, I think this was, I don't know the time, zone, the time frame she's given. It may be a year, two years, but still it's like. You don't get to tell me how to feel either. I agree. You don't get to tell me how to react to it if you waited three years. But, you know. Because at this point, it's like, well, what's your motive? And that's where, and that's the point. Now I have to look at motive. Now you so, may, in this article, they made sure to point out she was an artist, former basketball player at Nevada. And it's so that's like. That's what I'm asking. Is she an artist that raps, sings, a I, I don't painter, know. or. 
It says artist, and more than likely she's a entertainer. Okay, then we go. She says, "Come in, I'll see you next year." And she has a little damn <laughs> little hand sign shit coming the devil, up. Yeah, the Manu Kanuto. Yeah. So it's like they don't have nothing to do with what you you said. See you next year, but you throwing up the damn. Well, people do that now, unfortunately. The rock star. I'm mainly talking about black people do that now. Black people weren't doing it; they do it now. Yeah, and we know what black people do that—the wicked ass ones. Well, you know, uh, witchcraft and all this stuff has grown in the black community the last ten years or so. Yeah. That's why it's under attack and being destroyed. Yeah, but yeah, you know, like I said, we talked about the Ti Tiny thing. Ti said, "Damn, why uh, you keep wait, talking about a, me?" I'm making a point. We're always going to talk about the possible predators. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna talk about Hold it. Hold on now. Tiny too. She's considered pre- I, I a predator pre- too. I said tiny and T I and you just oh, you I brought thought up you just said you keep tiny. saying T I. I, mean, I say T. I. tiny as well. Matter of fact, <laughs> in the T. in a tiny T I situation, the women were saying that Tiny was the real predator. Yeah, she said they said she's They said that T I was different when he wasn't around her. Yeah, he was gentle. They said that Tiny is the one who was the but anyway. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm just saying that's that's according to them. <laughs> tiny was the <laughs> He was the damn rock wild in the situation. <laughs> Speaking of uh, this uh, assault situation, I want to show y'all this weird story. This is going to be a quick one to show how crazy this stuff is becoming. Judge gives Kentucky prison guard, prison guard convicted of sexual assault choice of army or jail. So he was taking a woman to a doctor's visit and on the way back from the doctor, they began to, he began to flirt with her according to that what they gave in the article and he told her that if i can get your time lesson in prison they end up doing something while she was still shackled they said it oh, when you're in prison when a person is in prison male male or female they cannot consent to sex so if a woman is in a male prison and she sleeps with a, a man in, inmate she is charged with sexual assault she has to register as a sex offender the same happens when a man uh, has intercourse with a female inmate he is automatically registered as a um, sexual predator. So regardless of what she said, whatever whatever happened in that van, he's, he was going to be registered anyway. He was ultimately going to be found guilty. It, no matter what. Even though. But. I believe. But the fact that he was even offered this type of weird choice means they know. That she. She was, she was going along with it. Exactly. You know. Um, and that happens a lot in prison. That was a TV show. Um. Orange is the New Black. There was another TV show, like a UK uh, oh, prison. Orange is the New Black, where the black woman following the white woman around a like white a black woman, doll. Yeah. Exactly. She's a pet for a white woman. Um, it it leads to, um, th- th- a lot of this stuff happens in male and female prisons. Uh, we know that in a male prison, you hear about these dudes getting these women pregnant. <laughs> it's crazy. And then in the female prisons, it happens too. Um, uh, so this is nothing new. But I just found it strange that he offered him to go into the military, especially if y'all are keeping up with what's happening in Russia, the Ukraine, Belarus, and now Kazakhstan. We're going to talk about Kazakhstan later uh, in the geopolitical conversation we're going to have concerning the uh, what's going on with this uh, global situation. But uh, I, I believe there's a, it says a lot that he gave him the choice to join the military, considering they're looking like they're about to turn it up on Russia right now. But, yeah. So, it seems like they're getting ready to rumble. <laughs> you got yeah. Russia, Belarus, Ukraine. Like, it's a Kazakhstan now. Um, Kazakhstan. Mm. It's funny how Taiwan just kind of went out of the media with China. Yeah. Taiwan just kind of went away. They, they was pushing that really bad. Really bad. At one point, China was Taiwan. like, they was telling America, you step foot, you come near Taiwan. Or you try to intervene. Yeah, we, we know. They basically saying Taiwan is, is Chinese now. We don't want to hear that they're a separate country. They, they Chinese. So, I think it's about to pop off there, possibly in the near future. But we'll talk about that a little later. It's connection to something else. Um, oh, this new TV show coming out. Um, there's a show being remade, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. We talked about it. We talked about it a couple of months ago. Uh, never before a trailer was released. Yeah. All we knew was the main character. And what somewhat of what it's gonna be about? Did, did we knew it was gonna be? A we drama? thought it was gonna be no. We thought it was going to be a movie. We didn't know yeah, it was yeah. gonna be a TV show. I thought it was gonna be a, no. I thought it was gonna be. I knew it was gonna be a TV show. Oh, I, I thought it was gonna be a movie. Yeah, we knew it was gonna be a drama and not a comedy. 
which is what you have to produce nowadays. You cannot do uh, comedy. Yeah. Um, because everybody's mind and thought process always goes back to the, the 90s and the early 2000s. Well, no, the reason why comedy isn't working now is because it's being influenced by people that ain't funny, number one, and people that are trying to use um, social media as a barometer for funny. People are taking stuff straight off of uh, Twitter and TikTok and Instagram and Facebook and just throwing it in a TV show and expecting it to be funny. The entire conversation sound, seems like a thread on social media. It's not funny no more because it's been taken off of social media. It's not you real. Even when Ricky Smiley ass tried to come out with a TV uh, show, try to make it like Martin. We're going to finally start doing this movie thing this week. This weekend. We'll try to put it out by Tuesday, but I can't wait till we get to Tyler Perry. <laughs> I even though I know you're talking about Ricky Smiley right there, but when you talk about Ricky Smiley's show, that made me immediately think of the writing of Tyler Perry. But we'll, we'll get to that. But this TV show, Bel Air, is what it's called. It's going to be on Peacock. And now, you brought this up. I didn't think about this. You said the reason why they put it on Peacock, because <laughs> they want <laughs> the niggas Absolutely. to go to Peacock. <laughs> Every time they want a streaming service or some type of uh, social media, uh, like Clubhouse. Yeah. They use black people for Clubhouse to get that going. Well, they tried to. What happened with, yeah, it is most mainly niggas on Clubhouse. Egg. But what happened was when they started doing the investment, I remember Joe Budden talked about this, and they didn't want to have any investment to black creators, and they kind of just, meow, meow. like, okay. <laughs> because remember, there was one point a lot of these celebrities, were, they were pushing Clubhouse hard. Yeah. Like every celebrity you can think of, any influencer, anybody with a platform was saying, get on Clubhouse. Because at first, it was where only celebrities was. Only celebrities was on there. Mm -hmm. And it was like, we can talk to each other about business. And then it kind of turned into this platform about uh, career building, networking. Now niggas on took over. Now it's, it's just the average niggas on there. <laughs> it's, uh, they talk about ADOS on there. Um, Pan Africanism. Pan Africanism. Uh, uh, black uh, relationships. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, the uh, gender wars on there now. Uh, the Manosphere is on there, too. Yeah, yeah. The Manosphere. Yeah. It's just. Yeah, yeah. It's toxic. It's the most. It might be more toxic. It might be the most toxic now. But yeah, Peacock is definitely. Uh, they definitely. Like, Will, you know, you should definitely put the. You know, I, I personally believe they wanted that on there for. So you, try, you think they're trying to be UPN 2.0? No, I just think they want uh, more people to subscribe to their uh So you think if services. they get a black audience, they're not going to pivot at some point? They will. Yeah, they will. So they're going to UPN it. Even um Amazon. Uh, you remember they had that show on there about the black family and uh, the, white, the white people? Them. Them. Yeah. yeah. I still haven't watched the show. I, I actually want to watch it. Um, I've had so many. I've had enough black people tell me it's just, it's just, uh, a trauma porn that yeah. I don't want to, but you're right. Sometimes you gotta watch stuff for yourself. That's a, yeah, you gotta watch it for yourself. But as that, you gotta have your own after opinion. what I heard them say about episode five, the fact that I know that episode, I don't want to see it. Yeah. I, I just don't want to see that. But we'll see. But let me go ahead and get to this trailer. We're gonna have to pause it throughout because you know everything Will Smith put out, we try to cover and the shit get flagged <laughs> if we play it too much. So we got to play like got that shit in lockdown. See. This time we're trying to make you forget who you are and where you came from. Don't let it do that. Damn! Uh, is it really, can it really be considered an original series if it's based off of a former series? They're saying it's an original series because it's, it's a drama. It's not a comedy. And then they've the storyline is the same, but I think they're kind of introducing new stuff into the storyline. Like they're giving you the backstory to certain things that you didn't know. Yeah, didn't know. Like they're showing you what happened in Philly how, before, how he got there. Yeah, because when we we watch the show, it's just oh, I got in a fight at the basketball. But court. I like that. I I we didn't really need to know it. We didn't really need to know that. Well, it was a comedy series, so they weren't gonna put it there. But this right here is. This is like a, uh, that was the comedy, only the good stuff. This is the dark side. This, yeah, this is the dark side of what it really would be like. That's what New York, the New York article, called. they call it the darker side. Of, yeah, Fresh Prince. Of, of Fresh Prince. Yeah. 
Jeffrey Thompson, house manager. Now, well, what they did keep consistent was they made the butler a uh, British man, a non ADOS. And uh, they did uh, make the mom. They made a dark skin again, but we don't know. Something might happen again, and they have to bring in nah, another they light again. skin on this. If they do that again, it's crazy. <laughs> but uh, the casting, we'll get to the casting in a little. But yeah. Oh, Viv. <laughs> 10 years is a long time. Let me show you around. Where them dimes at? Hillary. <laughs> the person that chose to be Hillary is a bit, it's way different, obviously. Um, what you mean? Hillary and the original was a, she was biracial. Her in father real, was white. And realized she's biracial, but she was light. They, they made a whole cast, and dark I don't mind skin. this. They made the whole cast dark skin. I don't mind it. Because we in the woke era. Oh, hold on. So let's, let's, let's go into that a little bit. But I don't mind that. No, no, no. Let me just go into that a little bit. I'm, okay. not, saying, I'm not trying to crucify you and make go it ahead. negative. So are you, <laughs> are you saying the only reason why they made these people... Now, this is Will Smith is the executive producer. Now, they made the main character who he is. He resembles Will more. Yep. Uh, now, he made, now, the character, he decided to cast as, as himself. Him. He made that yeah. consistent with what it was before. Yeah. So, you're saying the only reason why you think they made it where everybody was dark skinned is because of the quote-unquote uh, pandering. Yeah. Or wokeness. I, I'm saying that I believe that they were pandering. But you don't mind it, though? No, I don't mind it. Okay. People going to be like, damn, we want to see the trailer. They keep pausing the trailer. <laughs> I have to pause it because if I try to play this shit, the song playing, they're going to hit the shit, man. Let's go find you something fit for a prince. What do you think? I made you love. Yo, Uncle Phil. I'm glad you're safe. We'll talk later. Because of you, yo. Now... They, Uncle, we'll, we'll get to it. We wait. Oh, is this really baby Ashley? You're a long way from home, Mom. Oh, too. How you Man. been? <laughs> you know, thriving. I hope uh, one day we can talk about why you're really here. Do you know why I'm here from Philly? Scrap on the bull court. Got nasty. Now, that dude right there, I know him. He's a battle rapper. He's a battle rapper. Name Easy to Block Captain. <laughs> So Will Smith went and got a actual Philly battle rapper to yeah. play the gangster. So that's dope. I actually think that's kind of dope. So he made sure to make he be talking shit too. Who? That uh, the Philly He's battle rapper Cap dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so he went and got somebody actually from the hood in Philly to yeah. represent the hood in Philly. I, I will say he did that. Oh, and uh, what's his name? Is yeah, it? Uh, the, uh, I forgot his name. Um, he another battle rap blogger. The guy he's behind. The blogger. Him. The guy uh, right here. Here. Uh, what's his name? Shit, I don't want to pause it in. Uh, hold on. How we don't? Jay Black, that's yeah. his name. Jay Black. So I thought it, I think that's cool for him to put. Now Jay Black, I don't know if he's a street nigga, but Easy was, yeah. Was it you? Now some bad man from Philly, he want to deal with you. Why well, move mountains to get me here? So here's the story. Came to Bel Air for a better education. Simple. Be patient. Give this a real chance. We have a different set of rules here, okay? They made uh, Carlton's character a real asshole. Oh. Like in the first, um, in first Prince of Bel Air, he, he, was, he was the goofy, corny he was a dude. Goofy, corny. naive asshole. No, he was a goofy, corny. He was corny. It was like Will was the cool guy. Yeah. On oh, here, Carlton he, is the cool guy. Well, he. This is what's happening. You remember that episode of Kill and Black I, I when the two exactly. blacks? You <laughs> can't. You, you can't have, can't have more two than, blacks. In you can't world. have two blacks in a white school because I, I want to be the cool black, the only black. Because I'm the I, I dominate. I'm that's the only why, black. Yeah. That's why if, if you ever watched the what was it called the Bear Girls Club? Yeah. And it would be more than one black girl in the house. Yeah. They would say, well. We, Let's just team together and work together and let's run the house. Because they see them view themselves as the alpha female. Yeah. So the black man, when he is the only man, you know, he viewed himself as the, so it's like the you pack. can't have more than you can't two. Have, you can't have more than one. And he's threatened by that because Will Smith is going is is the cool. No, no, no. Black. Here's a difference. In the in this drama, Will is not the cool one. He's an outsider. 
Oh, see, this this is what the this is well, doing. This is once again giving you the backstory of how Will worked his way exactly. In first Prince, they sped it up. Yeah, they just made him the cool guy immediately. Really? Actually, he was an outsider, the poor guy who's from the hood. He don't. He's not intelligent and all this other stuff. On here, Carlton is the one with the cars. He plays chess. He's the smart sports. guy. He's the black guy. He's played sports too. In this yeah, one. he plays sports. When he played lacrosse, but yeah. Which is actually a pretty popular sport yeah. amongst black people. Back in the day, you had Jim Brown who played lacrosse. Yeah. Thing. But so they 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 made it more uh, realistic. If a yeah. if a dude from West Philly, a hood nigga from Philly, moved to Bel Air, he would not be the cool guy. He would be the pariah. He'd be the the outsider. He wouldn't fit in at all. <laughs> but they try. I think to, the women, the girls. Well, see, that's the thing. Will's the purpose of his character was showing that he was so charismatic. That he just engulfed himself with anybody he was around. Yeah. But in real life, yeah. it really wouldn't go like that. But yeah. yeah. If you want to do well, just keep your head down and follow my lead. Oh, whoa, whoa. Man, you know I'm a rep West Philly wherever I go. Yo, King, what's up, man? No love. Look around. These are my people. What? From now on, steer clear. Welcome to Bel Air. What the hell is my life? Yo, chill out, bro. Maybe Will just isn't cut out for this. Why are we working so hard to save a boy who doesn't want to be saved? Because we owe it to him. I can't remember when when Fresh Prince first started season one. Did Uncle Phil want to send him back? I think he did. He did kind of see it as he's a lost remember, cause. Remember, I would say the first season, um, Will and Aunt Viv were closer. We're closer. Yeah, but I would say by the second and third season. Uncle Bill Phil. started being more of a father figure yeah. to uh, Will and Aunt Viv character began to fall more in she the back. Played, she, she played, uh, still played like she a... She played a stern mother role. Well, hold on. Did she? Yeah, I would say in the second and third season, but the first season she was more of like... Compassionate to him. Compassionate towards Will. I think, she's always, I think she was always compassionate yeah. towards him, but yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. A real man takes responsibility for his actions. A real man knows when to let go of his pride and make the most out of a second chance. Be the will who charmed West Philly with his talent and swag. Let the music diffuse all the tension. Yeah, that's the feel. All right, so y'all get the point. So he gonna so do gonna come out to West to to Bel Air after Will or? What you mean? We just saw where uh, the, the character. That he got into the basketball court was out with a gun. So, is he gonna follow him out to Bel Air uh, or? I guess uh, he is chasing after him. So they might do some type of that situation. Have, yeah, for, some situation where he's he might want to go um, back. Now we gotta talk think about. Do you think it's needed? Do you think friends? Do you think this is needed? What you mean? And it's coming out Friday the thirteenth. February. Oh, okay, February thirteenth. I don't know if that's on a Friday or not. No, no, but yeah. Uh, you think, do you think this is needed? What you mean? What part? Uh, the show itself? Yeah, the show itself. It don't look bad. I think I'll watch it. But is it needed? What do you mean? I, I don't know what you mean. What do you mean say needed? Like, do we want it? Are do you we saying, want it? Uh, I think there are people who... Well, once again, are you asking, do we want it? As in, do we ask for it? Or saying, do we want it? As in, they announced it and we're okay with it. They announced it and are you okay with it? I'm okay with it, yeah. You? I don't think it's needed. So you don't think they should do it? They no. should have they should have done it. It's already done. So I think it's I think that they keep remaking stuff over and over and it's like clearly they can't come up with nothing new. <laughs> We've already had Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Fresh Prince of Bel Air is more popular now than what it was when it's on and when it's on air. When well, auto shows, watch it. Auto shows were honestly. Martin um, I mean, I mean, let's be honest. Uh, it's only one black American person is on the damn. Okay, so now that we get to the cast, all right. Now, have you looked up the entire cast? I looked up the, I looked up some of the cast. Some of the, it's. Let me tell you, it's hard to find some people ethnicity nowadays be because they hide it. It used to be easy. Now, in the original Fresh Prince, uh, Carlton is a uh, Dominican. Dominican. Ashley is Panamanian. Ashley Panamanian. Hillary is biracial. biracial. And everybody else, I think, is African. Everybody else is black American. 
in this one, I think the <laughs> I don't know. I think the only African American is the main character. Yeah. And some people say, well, why is that a problem? It's not necessarily a problem. It's just it just seems like black Americans are getting less less and less <laughs> acting roles. roles. Especially and it's a pro- that is a that and in itself is a problem. Especially when it's a show based in America by for African Americans. Like, and I think they keep putting stuff on T V that gives a false uh reality to oh, what it's really like in this. America. I mean, in the original series, Uncle Phil is a judge that lives in a mansion in Bel Air. No, wait, hold on, you got And I have to and I have to tell you where I got this from. Tone uh, Talk. Yeah. Shout out to Tone. When he broke this down, I'm like, <laughs> "Oh <Yo>, yeah." <laughs> him and Yvette, they it's like it, it, it wake you up. Let me say this. When it comes to the political Eddie West thing and all that lineage stuff, you may not agree with everything they say, but one thing they got is the stats in the in the documentation they got it how in the world can a judge afford a mansion in in bel-air millions millions of dollars worth the lowest the lowest now this is 2022 when i looked this up so i don't know how much it was in the 90s probably you gotta count inflation so even more expensive so the cheapest house they have right now in bel-air is 6.5 million dollars so that would be equivalent it'd be more so the house is now it, it, like the lowest is six point five million. The highest is five hundred million. Yeah. Uh, the average judge salary is one hundred and forty six thousand uh, dollars a year. That's middle class. Well, that's upper middle class. That's yeah. upper middle class. But you can't afford no six point five million dollar house. It depends on how long you a judge. Dude, hold on. This is America as well. Let's get into the fact that judges are a part of slavery. They sell people. There are judges who get kicked back for sending people to certain prisons. Yeah. We, there was a story a few years ago of a female judge who was sending girls to certain, um, uh, what do they call those, underage jails? What do they call that? I don't know. Homes, whatever they call them. A judge was sending certain people to certain places for kickback. So and, uh, judges make side money sending people to a particular prison. Yeah, but dude, that's, that much side money adding up to those 6.5 million. Hey, it, there's a lot of millionaire what, judges. What, how he broke it down, what he said made sense. The only way a judge making uh upper middle class salaries will be able to live in Bel Air as if it was passed down through lineage. Lineage. Well I guess so, you, are are you are you saying that they were trying to sell bootstrapism in first print? They were. His Uncle Phil was trying to sell boot I think that's on the, I think that's in the first season. The first season. He yeah. definitely was trying to say and that's Pull what, yourself up by your bootstrap. And, and Will's character was the, uh, actually, there's other things infecting me. And yeah. Michael Phil was like, don't worry about that stuff. Just go through it and come out on the other side better. So, so what they they love selling, uh, they love selling black people uh, dreams, <laughs> pretty much. Now, take a, let's take it to the fact, the li, the, uh, living single. Yeah. Now, remember, it was three of them living in a brownstone uh, apartment. apartment. Yeah. Now, Khadija owned a fucking magazine, and she still lived. In and a, she still lived. Had a roommate with <laughs> with, with a roommate who was a fucking seamstress yeah. for a damn soap opera, and yeah. her cousin worked on, for her at the reception. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And then so, Max, a lawyer, <coughs> she lived in an apartment. She lived in an apartment, not that apartment. We don't know what apartment she yeah. lived in. And then you had uh, what did <laughs> um. Kyle was a business uh, broker or stock person or something. And he lived in the apartment. And Overton was a handyman, was a handyman who ran for the building. Yeah. For the building. Now, Kyle was a, uh, a, a, a business broker yeah. who still had to have a roommate an living in an apartment. <laughs> That's crazy. But Uncle Phil, a judge, <laughs> could afford a mansion in Bel Air. And his All wife right. was a teacher, a professor. Yeah. Hey. Even if you add day earn come together, it's still not enough money. I don't know. Same thing with the Cosby's. They were, oh, they were both. There was a, he was a doctor on and their she was salary. A they couldn't afford a, a brown. Can, no, a doctor can afford it. No, they could not. A doctor can afford it. No, a doctor they can afford a mansion. Dude, no, they couldn't. Travis, you know how many doctors live in Bel Air? Travis, I'm not even talking about. We're not even. That's talking, cosmetics. That's the that's ones what, that do. That's what I'm saying. I'm not talking about no, 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 your no. Uh, even brain surgeons, neurosurgeons. They they make that type of money. They 
doctors are one of the few that can actually be millionaires and live in those type of places. One hundred. How many black uh, dentists? Dentists can live in those houses. Celebrity. A dentist can become a damn uh, millionaire just working with celebrities. Dentists can work live in a mansion. Okay, he's selling dreams. Oh, here we go. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's needed. A lot of people are gonna disagree with me, but I. I don't think we need to have a reboot of uh oh now it's the what's it called bel air yeah so yeah all right i guess that's um end of that discussion we're gonna move on yeah. <laughs> i am looking forward to the show though i am looking forward to the show I, i'm not all right i got now i got some strange connections to make and a very strange story to tell you now i haven't showed you this when i show you this story first i'm gonna get through something i already showed you and that is let me get to it now we've talked about the slave trade in colleges before how colleges around this country a bulk of them were have a huge hand in slavery i think we talked about last week or the week before last a college that was renting slaves that was in north carolina <laughs> yeah north carolina was it um and no, it was at It was it was it North Carolina? It wasn't Duke. We can go back. We I, we talked about it already. I thought it was in North Carolina. It, it was in North Carolina. I'm talking about the college, North Carolina. I don't know if it was that one or another one. UNC. I'm not sure if it was UNC. Might be US. I mean, not USC. Um, one of those colleges. But I just saw this one. Where this article talk about Shackle legacy history of slavery helped build many U.S. colleges and universities. They go through this article talking about how colleges had an impact in it, right? But that's not really what I want to focus on. There was a, uh, there's a little clip, not a clip, there's like a little uh, blurb underneath this one of these pictures, the main picture at the top, where they uh, talked about this right here, but they also said right here, the center of slavery at Georgetown. By the time the Jesuit priests of Maryland founded Georgetown College in 1789, they were among the biggest slave owners in the colony. With several tobacco plantations scattered across Maryland, the Catholic order owned at least 200 slaves. Uh, it used the income from their labor to create Georgetown, part of the educational mission of the spread to maintain Catholicism across the U.S. or in the U.S. The Jesuits. <laughs> See right here, this little blur. Franklin Campbell was a teenager when he was sold to keep Georgetown University afloat. He was one of some 272 enslaved people sold by Jesuits in Maryland and two plantations in Louisiana. Now, the Jesuits are basically uh, the Catholic Church's CIA. They're their intelligence mm -hmm. organization. They, go, they spread out throughout the world, and they have missions they have to do. Now, go and read the Jesuit oath. We talked about this before. In their oath, they promise that they will lie, kill, steal, cheat to get their missions done. Go Who look at it. What does that sound like? Huh? What group of people is that? Who does that sound like? <laughs> Demons. That's what it sounds like. Don't it sound like the little... Huh? The little tiny hat people. The tiny hats. The shillings. <laughs> the herd. But <laughs> they, they... Go read the Jesuit oath. And they promised they would do all those things to make sure their mission is done. But I bumped into a person <laughs> who uh, who has ties to the Jesuit order. Who? Uh, it's so, I did not think this would ever happen. There's no way. There's no way this is true, right? Guess who I found out is part of the damn Jesuit, who has connections to the Jesuits? Yep. Oh, no. <laughs> Dr. Anthony Fauci addresses his fellow Jesuit educated graduates. Now, he was educated. He is a Jesuit educated person. That's all I'm, I'm not going to say he is a Jesuit. I'm saying he is Jesuit educated. Once again, go look at the beliefs of the Jesuit oath, the order, and what they believe, and the fact that Dr. Fauci is connected to them. And the fact that he's been and running he, this shit show is, of a. Wait, wait. wait. We'll just say he's the highest paid government employee in America. He makes more than the president of the United States, at least legally. Because <laughs> we know Biden. <laughs> we know Biden we, likes I, I to read dabble the, in business affairs. I don't care what they say. I read them emails. Biden was getting paid under the table like crazy. But anyway. Yep. Now, he's on here, he addressed his class 
he went to a Jesuit educated uh, school <laughs> and he's the person who just so happened to be running this operation. He has ties to, I can't even say the name, As I Die Slow. That's all I can say because they will get us up out of here if I say it out loud. I just found this amazing. Yeah. Also, <laughs> since we're talking about Catholicism and the Jesuit order, look up magisterial privilege. We've talked about that before. Just look up magisterial privilege and what they believe they are allowed to do in the confinement of uh, their quote unquote churches. And I'm also going to bring up again, Queen Elizabeth got a warrant <laughs> for, by the way, the Queen, bill, Queen Elizabeth said, you got one more time to mention my name on your podcast. But listen, on that video, we talked about that a few months <laughs> ago. You know, they got a, a, a flag underneath our video saying that that's not true. The Queen Elizabeth thing. Wow. So I'm like, hold on. Our little old video, y'all went all y'all went yeah, there. This and, little old channel and this little old channel be going through pure hell. Boy, y'all, boy, it's pure right. hell. But listen, I just that I just thought that was kind of because I was looking up the whole you know schools that have. Oh, some, they don't discriminate. YouTube said they don't discriminate against channels, big or small. And the Catholic Church, I think I forgot how long ago that was. I, if I'm not mistaken, they just came out and apologized for their role in slavery couple months ago if i'm not mistaken yeah always apologizing never no money oh yeah they you ain't getting no damn never money. no reparations just always apologies like Empty that uh, tangibles like that woman uh renty's uh uh descendant when she said how when it comes to black people we can't just get reparations we have to get as we all oh, we need scholarships we need to rebuild this no just give us the money nope. the apology and then we'll do the other things <laughs> like everybody else no nope. everybody else is how it go Okay, and this here is a, the strange story I want to show y'all. The strange story of Eugene the Mummy. I came across this on Twitter. There's a guy on TikTok who talked about this, and I, I was blown away. So I looked it up myself and verified it and found uh, evidence of this. When I show you, I haven't shown you this story. You're going to be crazy. It's, it's crazy. So I'm going to show the video first of him uh, explaining it. Then I'm going to show. Uh, come here. <laughs> come here. I'm going to show a story, an article on it. Let me show. All right. All right. I'm glad you are. Come here. Because I'm going to need y'all to explain to me how a black man can stumble into a city in 1929 and not get buried for 35 years. So for 35 years in Sabina, Ohio, they displayed this black man that came to their town and died. They used him as Halloween props by the local high school. They took him on parades. The students at Ohio State took his body, would put him up as props all around campus. They plucked his gold teeth out of his mouth. Over a million white people traveled into the city to see the attraction. And then finally, after 35 years, the owners got tired of people stealing his body after they stole his ring off his finger. They decided to bury him. Until this day, white people still make this journey to go see Eugene's body. <laughs> this shit what? Is, th this way they treat you like you're a. Uh, they use the, they use this black man. That's necrophilia. Dead body. That's uh, a form of necrophilia. Yeah, they use his body as a uh, tourist attraction. Tourist attraction. They use it as a weird. Just just wait. So here's this, this is fucking crazy. Now look at this. History has forgotten the bizarre Ohio event from 90 years ago. Sometimes events could be too strange and unsettling to explain, so they're eventually forgotten altogether. If you've ever heard of Eugene the Monk Mummy, you should know that he was a real man who passed away in Ohio. He came to a small town in Ohio for work, died of natural causes, quote unquote, we'll and, never was, know. and was never identified. To this day, he has yet to be identified, and it took th nearly 36 years for the town to bury him. Read on to find out how and when and where this strange piece of our Ohio history unfolded. The town uh, of Sabrina, known as the Eden of Ohio, was once home to Eugene the Mummy, an unidentified dead man who became an unusual roadside attraction and was displayed in the town for more than 36 years. Although he was rumored to be looking for work, he was found dead days later on the side of the road, supposedly from natural causes. Who the hell dies on the side of the road well, from natural, natural causes? causes? Somebody killed him. So he was killed. 
In the late 1920s, a man known, so he was found uh, walking along the road just a few miles outside of Sabrina. The body had no identification on it, only a slip of paper with the Cincinnati address of 1118 Yale Avenue, which led to nothing more than a vacant lot. Well, what, at what point did you go to that address? Did you wait 30 years? Uh, uh, that's what it seemed like they did. Although the body was never identified, the unidentified man became known as Eugene simply because a man named Eugene lived near the address of the slip of paper that led to the vacant lot. Eugene was taken uh, to local funeral home where he was embalmed and held for identification, an identification that was never made. For more than 36 years, Eugene rested on a couch in a small building behind a funeral home where people go, got word of his strange display. They came from all over to see Eugene. Locals frequently gave directions to out-of-towners passing through. Over the years, millions of people from all over the country came to Sabrina and observed Eugene, yet no one recognized him. Think well, about this. They, I- they felt like, because <laughs> this is what I'm getting out of it, the owners of the funeral home. Yeah, nobody knew him, so. Felt like because nobody knew him and they couldn't identify this man's body that they owned him. Yep. And could use him however they wanted to use him. So they used him as a display to make for tourists. Yep. <laughs> they used this man's body for tourism off his body. They felt like they owned him because they couldn't identify, quote unquote, who he was, which I believe that's a fucking lie. I believe it so too. I believe they killed him. I believe he was killed and they just did this. Eugene was finally buried after multiple disrespectful pranks were pulled with him. Locals even report that one night some college uh, students stole the body and placed him on a park bench on campus. And this is the video. Today, Eugene rests in a grave in town cemetery. The headstone reads, Eugene, found dead, 1928, buried, 1964. Let me wow. show you all this. <laughs> Sabina, nicknamed the Eden of Ohio Town Cemetery. Its curious headstone reads, Eugene, found dead, 1928, buried, 1964. Some 60 years ago, an unknown black man was walking along this road about three miles outside of town. Word was that he came to Sabina looking for work, but never made it. His body was discovered lying here along the roadside. Townspeople say he died, apparently, of natural causes. The body had no identification, except for a sliver of paper with a Cincinnati address on it. 1118 Yale Avenue, which later turned out to be a vacant lot. But a man named Eugene lived near the lot. Thus, the corpse now... How much later? They keep saying later. It turned out to be a vacant lot. Man, this got lies all over it. So, at what point did y'all go to the actual address? When they decided to bury his ass in 1964. Had a name. People began referring to the man as Eugene. He was brought to the local funeral home naturally, and they embalmed him and held him for identification. And no identification to this day has ever been made. So, Eugene was placed in this little building in back of the town funeral home, and there he rested on a couch for more than 36 years. When people found out, they came from all over to see the bizarre sight. Because everybody came to town wanted to know where he was at. You have to go give it for directions, and they still do. He's a legend. He's here with us and probably is going to be. <laughs> These people, look. Are devil. Oh, this way. You can't tell me that these people don't have extreme psychological, I don't even know. The town. Not the, no, these people. Who, who the it hell? For, it's, it's so many levels of crazy. Okay, you got the funeral home that kept him on the couch for 30 years. Why well, didn't you didn't just stay, bury him? He didn't have a smell to they him? They embalmed him. Oh, yeah, I forgot. So why not just bury him? That's one crazy. That why you got him body? body? Hold up for thirty. Feet. He's embalmed. Once you're embalmed, they stuff you. You can last. Okay. He's mummified. That's why they call him the mummy. So you you sat him on a couch instead of burying him. That's already what the hell wrong with you? This guy, this this one more. He crazy as hell. What's he sound? Then, how do you even find out there's a body on a couch in Ohio that I want to go see? Seems like they promoting it. So it, there you go. So who so who told you about it? Radio stations, television, uh, like they did, like they used to do hangings. Uh, exactly. Pick, pick pick a nigger, which later became picnics. picnics. So <laughs> the level of crazy. So you got the people that the funeral home. Then you got the the people that want to see it. Then you got the townspeople telling you where it's at. 
<laughs> Nobody had common sense. Nobody said, uh, this is weird, bury Nobody him. said, y'all need to stop fucking doing this and bury that man. So not only did one prank get done where they took his body and drove around with it, took his body and put it on the, high, on the college bench, it took multiple things to happen for you to finally, I don't even think you buried him because of that. It seemed like you buried him because somebody in that 36 years said, this is crazy, bury him. Somebody finally came along and said, "Because you wasn't holding his body for all that no time identification. For identification, it was tourism." So at some point, somebody came along and said, "This is a bad look, bury him." And look at her; she looked like a man. <laughs> yeah. This curiosity that brought people from all over the country to their little town. I got calls from oh Indiana. As I can remember, far away in Cleveland and places, wanting to know if they'd come down, where, where they could locate him. When you came to town, you went around to see Eugene. And that, you know, at that time, uh, there was no enclosure. He was out there, you know, available to the public. And it was a real brave thing to do if you went around at night, you know, to, to view him, because that was kind of scary. But then young pranksters began playing cruel, disrespectful tricks, stealing the man's body and taking him on joy rides around town. Ohio State students, I guess, did uh, uh, kidnap him one night and laid him on the uh, uh, park bench up there at the campus and they had to go get him. They didn't care for the type of publicity they were getting. They quietly went out. They did take a minister, bought a lot for him, and buried him. So it was on a cool, cloudy October day when Eugene was finally committed to the earth. Dressed in a new suit of clothes and cased in a fine casket, Eugene was buried in the town cemetery some 36 years after his body was found. And they still talk about him here and all over, of the little man who in death is still legend some 60 years later. They don't see the cruelty in, in the things that they the do. Dehumanization, to take this man's body and use it and parade it around. Can you imagine if black people took a white man's body, embalmed him, and other niggas was coming to town to view it. They, I can't we even would, imagine. We wouldn't even, like, they'd be like, y'all need to take that damn man body First of all, niggas would say, you nasty. <laughs> Why you got that man body out here? Let me read this to y'all. Now, this right here, I got this from uh, Soul Black on Twitter. He found this. On the YouTube comment section on the video, I found I saw the article and saw the video, but I didn't go into the comments. This person said, we just found his stone today with exclamation points. We were exploring the cemetery and found him. The stone is beautiful. Many, many gifts, a Pepsi, tons of coins, spell jars, spell jars, witchcraft, candles. I sent a photo to my family and found out my father visited Eugene in the early 60s. Says she had no idea he was buried there, but remember going to a field trip to see the man that turned to stone. A field trip? That means you were in high school at the minimum. At the maximum, I'm sorry. My father said he was terrified for years after that. So let me get this straight. Your dad went and saw <laughs> this dead body in school, part of a field trip. But maybe he meant field trip as a trip he took himself. So I won't even say he was in school. Yeah. In the 60s, you went and saw his burial. What is your obsession with seeing this man? <laughs> Y'all can see the look Trevor's giving me. <laughs> what the hell is going on? What, what type of psych psychological hole? What, what is this? I want to say something, but I don't want to be lewd. So I'm trying not to listen. I think there's more to, to this story and what they're saying. They took this man's body and bombed it. And people just randomly came all over the country just to see this dead black man. Seems like they were coming to see something else. I don't think, I don't think they went that far. Shit. We keep, we'd have been talking about it a couple. That's interesting. You brought this up. We've been talking about uh, what these coroners be doing to these dead bodies. Yeah. And then you somehow stumble across the story. These some wicked, deranged. Okay, now hold on. You just put something. Now you, see, hold on. You just put that something in my head. <laughs> I'm coming out. These people coming from all over the world. 
I ain't gonna say all over the world. They coming from these towns near all over the country. He, it, he, it, that man said all over the country, and it's white people. It's all white people. Not man, nigga. If a nigga came to see that, he probably be like, "What the?" And they did. They they came to see that. And, and they didn't shut it that, down. <laughs> they need their ass whooped. Yeah, they would. <sighs> crazy story. That was that was. Some, <laughs> I had to say that one for that you. That was some crazy ass shit. I had to say that one for you. I told you it was crazy. <laughs> the things you. they do to <laughs> us is it's crazy, man. That's definitely gonna have to be a individual clip by itself. I'm gonna put that one out. That's, That's cruelty. Very, very cruel. But yeah, but these people. This man probably actually had a uh, family, family and relatives, and you can identify. Even then, they could identify who somebody. Well, no, they're saying they didn't have nobody to come identify him. But yeah, they didn't do dental records back then. Or? I don't know. They didn't have all that. They say they, they did. didn't. They didn't. That's why a lot of the, okay. a lot of people that's getting out of prison right now is because of faulty data from back then. It wasn't until the sure, late nineties. Sure, it was faulty wait, data. Wait, it wasn't until the late nineties, early two thousands that people um uh, started actually getting real forensic, being able to use real forensic stuff. Why do you think so many black men getting out of prison right now? Because of all that hair and no, they're getting out of prison right now because they done did their time for slavery and. They done did all the things they needed them to do. Now they letting them go. Okay, my point I'm making is all those people who went to prison for bad forensic, they're being let out of prison because the forensics is wrong. I'm glad you're so trusting in the system. Wait, so you think, you think the forensics is actually working from the 30s? Huh? Huh? You think the forensics from the 30s was actually real science? Uh, I believe they were far more advanced than what they saying they were, and we know that to be a fact that some of the things for DNA. I'm just gonna leave. I'm I'm just too much of a conspiracy. I'm just gonna leave it alone. I'm, I'm trying to figure out. What, are you saying that in the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, they have real forensic scientific advancements that can actually keep dental records and blood and DNA? I just personally don't believe shit they tell you. That's just what I'm. I'm not. At. You're not telling me what they're telling you. If they say that there's that they they wasn't developed and blah 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 blah, I don't believe what they tell you. So you think all those black men who went to prison, their DNA was not the same? No, that, I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm just leaving it alone. I'm just gonna you know, leave it alone. I'm confused. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Leave it at that. We can move on to the next story. No, no, no. Yes, we are because I'm not gonna stay on this segment for five, ten minutes. We're gonna move on to the next segment. I don't know what you. Ask. Okay, whatever. We'll get on that another day because I don't know what you're saying right there. But uh, all right, hold on. All right, Biden approval rating drops to new low of 33 percent on concerns about his handling of COVID economy in poll. I mean, he was just at 36. It's- Three more points that drop, so it's not like a big shocking thing. Anytime you drop, it's a big deal. <laughs> President Joe Biden's approval rating drops to thirty percent. A new uh, Quinnipiac <laughs> University poll, the lowest mark of his uh, of any major public survey uh, during his well, presidency, hell. as he takes a beating over his handling of the economy and coronavirus. What's Kamala now? She was at eleven or nine percent last time. I, that, that wasn't a. Uh, I don't think that was a national poll. Oh, okay, I think that's why they don't count it. Um. <laughs> so. We know that uh, we're in we're in the year of the midterms. Yes. So all the messaging you're hearing from the Democrats right now is their election. This is their election talk now. They're in the election year. Mm-hmm. All the things they said last year, if they if it conflicts with this year, they're gonna ignore it. They're gonna say, "Look, this is what we're saying now. Don't pay attention to what we said last last year. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to what we're saying now." You should pay attention to what they were saying last year. But they'll tell you don't care. Don't matter. So look at this. Centrist Democrats urge progressives to tamp down rhetoric. Oh, like Jimmy Dory? Exactly. So now the the centrist, what they're really talking about, I think we showed this already, was Hillary Clinton, who came out and said, hey, stop with the abolish police. Stop with the woke stuff. Stop uh, capitulating to voters who are going to vote for you. So what she's saying is, stop pandering to niggas stop pandering to the uh all the people who normally vote liberal focus on the people who don't so the independents 
the uh, center people, the center right people, that you could possibly steal from the Republicans. Uh, this is where one of the quotes that Hillary Clinton has. She said, I think that it's time for some, some careful thinking about what wins elections and not just the deep blue dishes where the Democrat and the liberal Democrat or so-called progressive Democrat is going to win. Clinton told NBC News in a recent interview, effective, effectively throwing a grenade into the longest running inter, inter-party debate in recent cycles. Mm. Okay. Hillary had this tweet right here. <coughs> she just tweeted this. She said, MLK said, I had hoped that the white moderate would understand that law and order exists for the purpose of establishing justice and that when they fail in this purpose, they become the dangerously structured dams that block the flow of social justice, social progress. She said, this is a subtweet. What she's saying is she's saying this against progressives. She's saying, basically, don't get rid of the good for the perfect. And somebody went on to prove how crazy this is (laughs) because (laughs) in the full quote, let me find it right quick. But anyway, in the full letter, he talked about the white moderate telling the Negro when it's time for him to get his justice. And she just sat here and (laughs) told the progressives that they should tamper back on their policy. Not yet. So she's describing herself in his quote. Pretty much. It's insane. By the way, a lot of people in the comment section are saying she owns slaves based off a book that was written about them. Well, we not shocked. Not at all. Not shocked at all. But hey, man, the Hillary Hillary Clinton them is they some bold people. They ignore all the stuff about them. They, the stuff they know people know about them. They don't give a damn. And they just they just want some do do something. All right. Simone Sanders, the linebacker. We saw her leave. The White House <laughs> after not getting the job she wanted. And you can't tell your theory. Now, before we get to your theory, Simone Sanders will now be working at MSNBC. She has two TV, so, TV shows that she's going to be hosting. Uh, the former VP spokesman is heading to the left leaning cable news network where she will host a weekend show and a show on a streaming platform. Hmm. Now, we know she wanted the job that uh, Saki yeah, had, Saki. where she's on television every day. She gets all this attention. But she, Biden threw her ass to Kamala, and she didn't like it, and she left Kamala. And immediately, <laughs> two weeks, because she ended, her, her job ended for her on New Year's, two weeks, I already got a job with MSNBC. They always land on their feet. So what was your theory as to why she quit? Why she quit Kamala? Yeah. Because she, uh, she wanted to be on TV. <laughs> That's why she quit. It was it was clear as day. She did not like being behind the scenes. She want to be, uh, she want to be in the spotlight. She want to be on a, on a platform where people can view her and see her every day, which we don't need to. When well, this is her comeback, now she's back on television. Yep. <laughs> I hope she don't get in a fight with nobody. Oh boy. It, well, I don't know. I think Jesus. She, now we just saw Joy and Reed. Joy Reed. Maybe losing her show, she That's might why. be allegedly. And I think Simone Sanders is replacing taking her spot. So you think Simone's going to be replacing Joy Reid? He's some slick people, boy. Vice President Kamala Harris, former top spokesman, had only been off the job for less than two weeks, but already she's got her next major gig lined up. And MSNBC announced on Monday that former President uh, Secretary Simone Sanders is joining the network as the host of both a weekend program and a show airing on MSNBC's The Choice on Peacock. Wow, another uh, Peacock show. So we went with the the Bel Air and and uh, and uh, now it's the streaming platform they're gonna mm, be on Peacock. They're trying to get black people to sign up on that streaming service. Both shows are slated to launch later this spring. And spring, when Joy Reid show puts in <laughs> in April, the the net. Oh no, I thought it said uh March. I mean March. I thought you said April. Maybe it was, yeah, maybe either April. one. Either April, one. March, they both damn spring. Yeah, uh, yeah. both uh, shows are slated to launch in the spring. The network has further details, in, including the show name, premiere date, and time slot will be announced in the coming months. When they fire Jory, <laughs> you'll know when she gonna get 
when her show aired and what days aired on. You know the time and all that stuff when they get rid of the other one. <laughs> Ooh. So once again, it's like a move. So now, here's my my theory as to why she's joining. She's not a mouthpiece because didn't we just see an article written a few? We did an art. We did a video. We talked about an article written where somebody was saying that Biden is getting more bad press, more bad press than Trump. So she's a mouthpiece. She's the mouthpiece for, for the White House for now. The Joe, uh, the Joe Biden, Kamala. She's going to defend him. She's the propaganda. So she's still going to be exactly a fucking linebacker for Joe Biden. So she's going to be on television defending Joe Biden, defending Kamala. No, it's not about Joe. Let me stop. Defending Kamala Harris. Well, she better get ready for the jokes that she's about to get. So now I gotta ask the, the question. Memes. Well, we already saw in the other article that I, be- I don't believe she quit. I believe she was fired. But now I don't think she was fired. I think she was told, "We need you out there." A script. <laughs> we need you on television to push a narrative that we want. That's why naming renaming the show "Lost in the Scripts." It could mean so many things. <laughs> that's why. That's why we named Lost it. Lost in the Scripts of. Uh, uh, on you know these movies, lost in the script in the, in the in the Bible, lost in the scripts that these celebrities and politicians. The deeper than they what get. they tell you, deeper than what these they are, write. These people literally have y'all don't. These people have scripts. They literally are told what to do. Yep. How does how now you have to think about this? How does Simone Sanders lose uh, quit the White House, and then in two weeks get he's getting a two TV shows on NSBC? But she was a political uh, commentary, commentator, yeah. commentator on, uh, you yeah. know, CNN. And it, she was doing this. But the fact is, immediately, yeah. she's right back on her feet. And right when they're trying to push the message now, of the midterms. Is Angela Rye going to make a return now, back to TV? There we go. Now, where's where's Angela Rye and all them? Are they, start, are they going to start? We'll see if she on Breakfast Club in the next coming week. She ain't been on Breakfast. She disappeared. She, After honestly, Biden got in office. After Biden got in office, uh, she was still visible a little. Yeah. Last time I saw her was when she went on Stephen A. Smith show. After Quan, after, after Car- Kwame, Kwame, yep. Carcino came out and said, what'd she do? She's the real We one. haven't seen Angela Rye ass for a while. So she ain't been outside in a couple of days. <laughs> days meaning months. Yeah. At least I haven't. I, I don't keep up with her. Maybe <laughs> I don't she keep has. up with either. Maybe she's been doing some stuff on YouTube. and My own know, channel. Maybe. I don't we know. We haven't seen her because, yeah. Don't nobody go check out her channel. But anyway, uh, is Angela Rye going to make a return back to uh, the spotlight? I don't know, but let's see what Biden had to say. This lie. He, t- now, he was in Georgia, but it was talking about the voting rights. Once again, the Democratic, their strategy now is to push the voting rights. Democracy, save democracy. Can when somebody you- please, what do they mean by voting rights? I thought we already had voting rights. I'm confused. Well, okay. The Republicans passed or tried try to pass the bill after the 2020 election that says that you cannot vote. You cannot vote early between a certain amount of time and a certain amount of days. Okay. They wanted to get rid of the window voting. They want to get rid of the uh, mail, mail in. They want to at least put more stringent rules on the mail in and all that stuff. The Democrats want to expand it. They want to make it where you can have same day registration which means if you're a person who, oh, they want to allow uh, uh, felons to vote, ex-felons. So if you're a person who is an ex-felon and you come and register to vote, the same time you register will be the same time you vote, which means if, if let's say they get, they didn't get that pass where an ex-felon can vote. Well, the, the same time I'm processing who you are will be the same time I'm processing your vote. So by the time I get back to your, your felon and you're not supposed to be able to vote, your vote already counted. Well, I, I'm I, I'm gonna say this. I believe that uh, if you have paid your debts to society, that you should be able to vote. Uh, should be able to vote. It depends on your crime, though. To me, uh-huh. when, when you say you can vote, I mean you used to be a part of society again. Yeah. If yeah, I believe non-violent, you should be able to vote. You should be able to vote. Uh, depending. On, go ahead. I still don't. <sighs> when you think of voting rights 
I think black people think like, oh, and, they're trying to take away our right to vote. And that's what they're doing. That's why they went to Georgia to have this speech. And I was like, why are they going to Georgia? I said, I guess Georgia really has it's some the black voting Mecca. problem. No, Georgia's the black Mecca now. You don't, it used to be you, back in the day, you would go up to New York to get to talk to the black, the black uh, world. You would go to New York, Harlem, places like that. South Carolina, you still go to South Carolina, but Georgia has become the face of where you go now. So let me show you what he had to say in Georgia, though. I did not walk in the shoes of generations of students who walked these grounds. But I walked other grounds because I'm so damn old I was there as well. (laughs) They think I'm kidding, man. (laughs) Seems like yesterday, the first time I got arrested. Anyway. When he get arrested in civil rights. Here we go. Every time they around black people, they got to change their whole swag and how they talk. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> you ain't black if you don't vote for me, man. Boy, I still don't know how he got away with that. So let, now. I'm surprised he said, I'm surprised he didn't say, and where's that damn tater salad at? <laughs> what hot sauce? We're in hot sauce. Hillary's like, it's in my bag, Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when she, her accent turned to a Southern accent during the mm-hmm. campaign? Now, she's from upstate, but she was sounding like a Southern. No, she's from Arkansas. She she mainly lived in the upstate. I'm just saying, they are known as the Arkansas. But she changed her accent to fit the No, Bill is from Arkansas. Yeah. My bad. She's from, she's from New York. I don't, I don't know where she's from. The point is, <sighs> she changed her accent from? in order to fit in with a Southern audience when she was campaigning. <laughs> Okay, let's get, okay, let's speed this up for a second. We got to speed it up. All right. The Democrats are looking bad for mid, the 2020 midterms. Right now, they have to deal with the fact that a lot of people are mad at the mandates, whether they're wanting to enforce it more or enforce it less. That's whatever. That's to be on the point. People are pissed. Biden's numbers are at 33%. So the leader of the Democratic Party, two-thirds. Chicago. Okay, up north. Yeah. The leader of the Democratic Party, or Midwest, should I say. The leader of the Democratic Party Two-thirds of the people polled don't like him, don't like how he's handling things. So how do we convince people to vote for us? Well, first we got to push one thing, voter. Hey, you can't, we're trying to save democracy, voter rights, all this stuff. But at the same time, we need to tell people, hey, we got to stop pandering. We got to go for the moderate more. So let's get into the the, uh, typical non-tangible things they always give black people. Black people ask for reparations they gave you Juneteenth. They gave you a hip-hop celebration holiday. Ain't it in October? Yes. They gave you all that bullshit. Now they're giving you temporary Harriet Tubman statue unveiled at City Hall celebrating her Pennsylvania connections. Now, Why would you do a temporary statue? <clears throat> mm. <clears throat> Let me temporarily put this up during the 2022 <laughs> yeah. uh, election. <clears throat> When they did the same thing with uh, George Floyd, that's one of the statues that wasn't permanent. Now, look at this. The poet Maya Angelou is the first black woman to be featured on a U.S. quarter. Now, I think she's in the back, and I'm pretty sure uh, George Washington is still in the front. So, she's on the back, like going through the back door. Um, (laughs) Now, listen. Let's talk shit about Maya Angelou. Now, hold on. Let me just get it off. Hold on. When they put people on uh, statues or they put people, we talked about this with George Floyd. So, hey, we, we do both sides. We talked about this with George Floyd. When they put people in statues or on, on, mon- on monetary value items, it's because they wanna, want you to hold reverence for those people. Those people are highly respected. They did something what they call great. Now, great can mean multiple things. Great doesn't necessarily mean good or bad. It means it was something monumental. Maya Angelou been put on a quarter on money means she's a person that should be held in high esteem. Now, the first time I knew my Angelo growing up was Tyler Perry movie. Hmm? I knew her, but I knew her as a poet before I knew her as uh, I knew she was a poet, but when she got into Tyler uh, Perry movies, when she got into Tyler Perry movie, I found out who she really was because I looked her up. Now, now look at this. Maya Angelou was a prostitute (gasps) or a sex worker. No. Also, Maya Angelou, this whole time, 
married to a Caucasian man. Mm, 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 so mm. The, throughout my entire childhood, I, like I said, I knew who my Angela was. I knew she was the poet. And all her poems were usually in this strongness and getting through tribulation and all this I other rise. stuff. Yeah. But then when I finally looked her up, when I got a little older, I was like, who, wait. Uh, this woman was a former prostitute who's married to a Caucasian man. Mm. So why would a U.S. put a former prostitute turned poet? I guess you don't turn poet. You can be a prostitute and a poet on a U.S. currency yeah. as a standard. Listen for black women. Mm. So <laughs> they put the face of a black woman on a coin who fits the bullshit description they push on you anyway. Yeah. I could tell you that she, she was prostituting the poem she was writing. <laughs> and the John came out and honked the horn. They called, him, said, well, they called him honky. <laughs> and I went into the car and I began to make him rise. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Lord. That's when she got that I ride shit from. Oh, by the man. way, y'all. Another thing they're doing. And this is all coming out right behind each other. They're rolling it out, huh? New Barbie honors journalist Ida B. Wells. Once again, these are not necessarily. The problem that I have with the Maya Angelou thing is because of her past. She was doing shit. I kind of feel like. You know, they always talking about Martin Luther King using him for references and every goddamn thing. Yep. So why would he not be the first person to go on money? And then they... Man, you would think Harriet, it would be Martin, right? Harriet Tubman supposed to be on the 20, ain't she? Yeah. I think that's going to be released in 2025 or something. Probably so. Yeah. But wouldn't you think Martin would be the first person of black? But when we say this, we're jealous. And, I, and every time a black well, man say, look, this is called... This is basic warfare <laughs> this is like low level but when you acknowledge and point it out there's a certain segment that'll say you're just jealous this ain't jealousy this is true I, I don't look you I don't, don't think i care what the fuck <laughs> these people put on the fucking money and this shit and them rolling out the shit i don't give a damn they ain't doing this for me to vote exactly now that's the point so who are they directing this to by putting this all this stuff out within the last week they're directing it to black women the lakeishas so i'm not gonna give you nothing but I'll do this stuff. I'll give you a Barbie doll. No tangibles. i put you on a quarter. What that What that Barbie doll going to do? Oh, they'll say, well, the Barbie doll is going to show little black girls that they could grow up and be anything. Okay, what's the tangibles? You can tell the them that yourself. You can tell them that. that. That's your job. That's our job as a community to teach our exactly. people. We need some fucking money. We need our fucking reparations. That's now, what we need, tangibles. So while they putting all this out, guess who popped out again? Oh, the one with the big secrets. Michelle Obama's urgent mes message about this year's midterm election. So they give you, put you on a quarter. They give you a statue. They give you a Barbie doll. And they, give and they you bring out big secrets. They bring out the person who is the Beyonce of politics. When I say Beyonce of politics, I mean there's somebody who's held in queen of politicians. There are some rumors out there about Beyonce too, having big <laughs> secrets. All right. So now Michelle Obama. She got this foundation that she started in 2016 about voting. Because once again, that's the most important thing to protect the vote, right? Protect democracy. But it just so happened that her foundation go coincides with the Democratic Party's selling point. So now they're pushing Michelle Obama in your face. Now, we, we saw this a few weeks ago. We asked the question, is she possibly <laughs> can run for president? They were <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> they were putting out the notion that she possibly could run with Kamala. And it was like, that don't make sense. Michelle Obama is more popular. Is that exactly. Michelle Obama is more popular than her. Can you imagine the White House? That's, ooh. How Pastor Darby said, going to be the biggest. <laughs> it's going to be. <laughs> well, first of all, Kamala ain't going to last long with Michelle Obama being president because she's like, she. I don't. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit. Don't hold no, you know. She's like, get a fucking ass out of here. I'm replacing now, her. <laughs> <laughs> this is Michelle Obama's, uh, what's call it? Fight for our vote. Now, this is her. Uh, her incentive to get things done, how they're going to do it. You say, as a civic engagement, voting rights, and voter mobil uh, mobilization of organizations representing millions of Americans, we are joining together to ensure that Congress acts on voting rights legislation and ensure that every voice is heard and every vote is counted in 2022 midterm elections and beyond. We're asking for you to join us. Now, where did you hear that messaging before? Sound like 2020. 
during the George Floyd marches, protest, riot. Yeah, they just re- regurgitate they, the same watch how far, shit over and over. Watch this. We stand united in our conviction to organize to turn out voters in 2022 midterm elections and make our democracy work for all of us. Collectively, we will. Listen, recruit and train at least 100,000 volunteers throughout 2022 to register and turn out voters in their communities. Go back to that New York Times article earlier last year in January after the, the election was won by Joe Biden, where they admitted that they had a cabal they put together and that during the George Floyd protests, they formed groups, they timed the protest and used the protest and made it political to convince people in order to do right by George Floyd, you need to vote Biden. They admitted this. They turned it political and pushed a Democratic uh, uh, push. And, and, and they even said it had to be done. We had yes. to do it. They said we had to save democracy. You hear that? And there's, a lot, said, of, there's a lot of commercial ads on YouTube that's talking about save fucking democracy. Save democracy. Now listen to this. Register more than a million new voters across the country. So they want to register more people. Now I wonder if that goes along with the Democratic belief that you should have same day registration. You should be able to uh, expand the days of voting, voting times, uh, and all that stuff. Organize at least 100,000 Americans to contact the senators, calling on them to do everything they can to pass the Freedom to Vote Act and John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. <sighs> they still haven't passed. I think they just, I can't, I can't remember. Jesus Christ, how I forget. They just did something for Emmett Till. They, um, they passed something. A holiday for him or something. And somebody was like, wait, why didn't you just pass the lynching act, the Emmett Till lynching act? <laughs> you passed a Emmett Till bill. They did something for Emmett Till, a holiday, a Memorial Day or something. Recruit thousands of lawyers to protect voters in their state when the freedom of to vote is threatened. Commit to educate voters on how to vote safely in their state. Now, how do you vote safely in your state? That means during the pandemic. So are they going to try to do the melon again? I believe so. We'll get to that in a little. All right. So we know their messaging. We know the strategy they always use. Uh, I got an article here where they talk about the stuff they want, but I'm not going to go through that right now. I just put it in the description. That When I say the things they want, I mean the Democrats, the bill they pushing for the voter rights bill. Like I said, you already know what it is. They want to uh, extend voting times, same-day registration, allow ex-con, ex-con felons to vote, uh, and all that other stuff. <laughs> I'm going to show this video of Obama when he was making voting about him and he, his legacy. He's a narcissist. He made everything about him. He made voting about him and his legacy. If you care about our legacy, realize everything we stand for is at stake. All now, this was in 2016. He was telling people, if you want to defend our legacy, you'll vote for Hillary. The progress we've made is at stake in this election. My name may not be on the ballot, but our progress is on the ballot. Tolerance is on the ballot. Democracy is on the ballot. You know what's funny how the Democrats keep bringing up democracy? Even and they the fucking ones that's do you know the, tearing down the fucking country. Do you know the party that used to call themselves the democracy? The Democrats. You know when they did this? When they were still the party of the Dixiecrats. Yes. When the Democrats were still the openly racist uh, party who pushed uh, Jim Crow, they were the ones that called themselves the democracy. Mm. It's funny how old things don't change. Nothing do they? changes. Everything always gets recycled and brought back. Justice is on the ballot. Good schools are on the ballot. <clears throat> Ending mass incarceration, that's on the ballot right now. So any mass incarceration was on the ballot in 2016. What about 2008? It, when you was president. What about 2012? Was reparations on the ballot? So it's funny how this stuff had to be done underneath, or was going to be done under Clinton, but it wasn't done and under eight years under do, you. She wasn't going to do shit. But you want to know what was sad? You know who did pass? Donald uh, Trump. <laughs> who president did, Donald who, Trump. Who did uh, do some changes to that? Donald Trump. And you know what? You know what is on the ballot? Whooping your ass. That's what's on the ballot. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So I, it wasn't until about 2015 
Because before 2015, about 2011, 2013, you still couldn't talk about Obama in a bad way around some black people. I've been talking about shit about Obama every after the first year of all uh, he was in office. I've been talking shit about him. I know, but I'm saying that it was still a situation where you weren't allowed to really. Oh, come on, man! He got to deal with those people. They trying to stop. Mm, yeah. Now you got stuff like this right here. He ain't dealing with shit. This dude, where's this dude at? There's this dude who says something funny in the comment section. They really block his comment as violent. Wow. His name is East Texas ADOS. He said his legacy is trash. <laughs> <laughs> he is trash, and I'll let him. <laughs> and I'll tell him to his face before I hit him with an open hand. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Think I respect the Kenyan white man? Please, Do I give no fucks around about Michelle and that he married a black woman. Shit don't impress me. Shit don't impress me either. This dude kept it. This person, I don't know if it's a dude. I'm she, sorry. This, she this, laying up with him every night. <laughs> ain't said shit about reparations. Ain't said shit about doing nothing for us. So him having a black woman laying in bed with him didn't do shit. <laughs> so miss me with the bullshit. Oh man. Now we're going to go into something a little deeper. Now we talked about January 6th and we know for a fact, even though they're denying it, that there were uh, intelligent um, in, uh, informants, intelligence informants that were there um, who allegedly was used to uh, uh, inspire people to go further than they may have went on their own. You see here, sedition conspiracy, 11 Oath Keepers charged in January 6th riot. So these Oath Keepers, remember, uh, what's the name of the other group? Proud Boys, right? The leader of the Proud Boys is an out-and-out -out informant. The leader of the Oath Keepers has worked with uh, uh, intelligence con agencies, or at least one of them. So I don't need to read an article. I'm, we're going to jump through this, right? Now watch this. Who is Ray Epps? D-O-J- won't say now Ray Epps if you go back to those videos released there was a guy there who was telling people to go in now people were just standing outside but this guy was telling people to charge the bill to go in and they were like what and they started yelling fed like he's a like, remember when those George Floyd things was happening and they were just leaving stacks of bricks on the side of the road so you could take them so in. you can take them in a bus window people were like where are these bricks coming from uh, there were people who had on um, hoodies and stuff that were going around breaking stuff with bats and people were pointing at them and say, that's a cop. Get him out of here. That person's a cop. <laughs> yeah, they had it on video. On uh, video. And a matter of fact, a woman even came out. I think she said it was her ex-husband. She came out and said, yes, yeah, that's my husband. He's a cop. I, he, that's my ex-husband. He's a cop. So this stuff has been proven that they're using this to antagonize. On both sides, by the way. Make sure I say that. On both sides. Now watch this right here. I want to show you what Cruz, the dude, the Texas guy, uh, he asked them a question. Was this guy FBI? Watch this. I want to turn to the FBI. How many FBI agents or confidential informants actively participated in the events of January 6th? Sir, I'm sure you can appreciate that I can't go into the specifics of sources and methods. Uh, did any here. FBI did agents any FBI or agents confidential or informants confidential actively, actively participate in the events of January 6th? Yes, yes or no? Yes or no. Sir, I can't, I can't answer that. Did any FBI agents any or confidential FBI informants agents commit crimes of violence on January 6th? 6th. I can't answer that, sir. Did any FBI agents any or FBI informants actively encourage and incite crimes of violence on January 6th? Sir, I can't answer that. Ms. Sadburn, Ms. who is Ray Epps? Yeah. I'm aware of the individual, sir. Uh, I don't have the specific background to him. Well, there are a lot of well, people who are understandably very are concerned, understandably about, Mr. concerned Epps. about Mr. Epps. On the night of January 5th, 2021, Epps wandered around the crowd that had gathered. And there's video out there of him chanting, tomorrow, we need to get into the Capitol, into the Capitol. This was strange behavior, so strange that the crowd began chanting, fed, 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 fed. <laughs> Ms. Sandburn, was Ray Epps a fed? <laughs> Sir, I cannot answer that question. The next. Why can't you answer that question? Next day. The next day. On January 6th, 
Mr. Epps is seen whispering to a person, and five seconds later, five seconds after he's whispering to a person, that same person begins to forcibly tear down the barricades. Did Mr. Epps urge them to tear down the barricades? Sir, similar to the other answers, I cannot answer that. Shortly thereafter, the FBI... So that means that y'all, that means that y'all had these feds come in yeah. and had to incite these people to get the riot to be bigger than what it was. Now, ask the question, is it possible that both sides planned January 6th? Absolutely. Both sides planned it. So what was the ultimate goal of January 6th? To get Donald Trump out of all, uh, to make sure that Donald Trump cannot be a, uh, president again. That's possible. Let's think bigger. Remember the Patriot Act? Yeah. What a, if there's a possible domestic threat rather than a international, is it possible I can expand the Patriot Act to domestic uh threats? Now I can have more coverage in America. I can watch you more, track yeah. you more. How about the fact that I can expand what Capitol Police can do? Look that up. They, they're trying to expand uh, Capitol Police to cover Congress uh, people even when they're in other states. Mm. Wow. So is this more of a control, get more control for government? Of course. They, I mean. But they, the problem is the internet. Because people are looking like those are agents. They able to point at the person. Well, they couldn't even fool, he couldn't even fool the crowd. The, the crowd was like, when what? He, the meeting he said that they said fed. Keep in mind, this crowd was Trump supporters. Most Trump supporters were quote unquote law abiding, but most of them were super cop, pro cop. So the second he said, let's go in, they were like, Fed. fed. He's a fed. <laughs> you, you the feds. <laughs> it's like when you, like black people, when one person in the group is trying to tell everybody to commit a crime, everybody go, you the feds or something? Like, yeah. <laughs> why are you telling us to commit a crime out loud? That's something that, you know. That's just organic. You, you wouldn't, yeah. It, it just happened. It's or we'll clear. Just, we'll have an understanding without saying it. You saying it means, oh, you fed. You 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 were brought here for a purpose. For a purpose. FBI put out a public post listing, seeking information on individuals connected with violent crimes on January 6th. Among those individuals, in the bottom there, is Mr. Epps. The FBI publicly asked for information, identifying, offering cash rewards leading to information, leading to, for information leading to the arrest. This was posted and then, sometime later, magically, Mr. Epps disappeared from the public posting. So they had a person of interest on an FBI website, and he was removed because the, they knew, oh, that's, a, that's one of our that's guys. That's one of their people. That's one of our guys. Took him down. According to public records, Mr. Epps has not been charged with anything. No one's exchange, explained. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these people that's there have been charged. They're sitting in jails. What's that woman named? Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. She's one of those people, Republican, who's been going to the jail, said, oh, the jails are horrible. It's like, you don't care when the niggas is in there. But I get it. You're playing your part as a reporter. I get it. It's theatrical. Whatever. Yeah. So, uh, what do I say? I just lost my train of thought that fast. But, yeah. Explained why a person videoed urging people to go to the Capitol, a person whose conduct was so suspect the crowd believed he was a Fed, would magically disappear from the list of people the FBI was looking at. Ms. Sanburn, a lot of Americans are concerned that the federal government deliberately encouraged illegal and violent conduct on January 6th. My question to you, and this is, a, this is not an ordinary law enforcement question, this is a question of a public accountability. Did federal agents or those in service of federal agent actively encourage violent and criminal conduct on January 6th? Not to my knowledge, sir. Thank you. That's an easy that's an easy way to get out of that. You could say you didn't know. You didn't say no though. But okay. So the, I'm bringing it up for a reason, y'all. So now the January 6th thing is being used as a possible push for a civil war. If you notice during this mandate for vaccines, one of the one of the groups that's been heavily pushed to take the vaccine or get kicked out were the military. A lot of these uh, military dudes, if you didn't take the vaccine, you were kicked. You were what they call it. Um, 
That's a word they have for it. Dis- What's the word? Discharged? Yeah, discharged. So you had to leave. Was it honorably discharged or? I don't think so. I don't know. I don't know. So I found this article right here. Now, this right here, this article came out January 11th, 2022. January 11, 2022. It says U.S. Army to fight guerrilla freedom fighters in North, Central North Carolina as part of an unconventional warfare exercise. So in this, they basically say, hey, we're going to do some drills against uh, some people. Don't be all the people around. Be, it's OK. This is just we're just running drills and stuff. Realistic, but don't be don't be worried. Now, guess who the threats they say they're drilling against? Who? seasoned freedom fighters now in any outside of america any group called freedom fighters are seen as a group that are going against an authoritarian government and trying to overthrow it for a a better democracy for the people yeah so why would america i'm sorry why would this this is fort bragg why would they admit that they're going against freedom fighters not terrorists freedom fighters so who are the people right now who are saying we need to protect our freedom? Um, white people. White people. Middle and America. veterans. Middle America. Exactly. People with guns. And a lot of them have military training. And they've been doing this for a very long time. So if they're admitting they're going against seasoned, which means trained, freedom fighters, that means they're planning to go against veterans. Those veterans will be people who are pro-Trump. Or people who are against the mandates of vaccines. Correct? Yep. But here, look at this. This is <laughs> February 27th. No, thank you. I don't feel like doing this. This is February 27th, 2020. Elaborate unconventional warfare exercise set to undisclosed sites undisclosed sites in North Carolina. That's 2020. Now look at this one. Secretive warfare training being staged in 21 count North Carolina counties, Army says. This is 2019. So every year they do the same drills since 2019. Three consecutive years. Hmm. <laughs> Will we get one this year in 2020? We did 2022. Oh, the first article. Okay. So 2022, 2020, and 2019. They so didn't they do didn't one do in 2021. In okay. <laughs> so I, or at least I didn't look at I didn't look for the article. <laughs> so the thing that goes with this is remember when Trump lost the election, quote unquote, he called it the big steal. The Democrats replied and called it the big lie. Right? The big lie. By the way, I got to show this article written by Jamila Lamux, who said that there's this is the black version of the big lie. And she called it Dave Chappelle and the black ass lie that keeps us down. If you know who Jamila Lamux is, you can look her up. She's been doing this type of stuff for the longest. But in this article, she basically broke down how black men, no matter how much they're treated so badly, they also can be oppressors, the patriarchy, all that stuff. Right? How they're how black uh, men are a danger to black women and gay people and children, basically painting the black man as the boogeyman all over again throughout the article. But she called it the black ass lie, which is that, well, at least he framed Dave Chappelle painting black men, even though he said black people, he never said black men, but he said, she's saying that. Sorry about that. I had to pause for a second. But as I was saying, the big lie <laughs> was a term that was used by the Democrats uh, against Trump's uh, accusation that the election was taken from him. And she turned into a Dave Chappelle making the assumption that black men are the most oppressed and all this stuff. And she basically wrote an article depicting black men as actually, we love you so much, but actually you're just as much a predator. And she called it the black ass lie. So you this could, I'm like- put a, go ahead. So this is just like the Roots article. Yeah. The black, black men are the white there you people go. of black people. Of black people. That's what this article pretty much is. I'm going to put it in the description. You can read it yourself. 
But really what I want to talk about this is, do y'all know <laughs> what a term? Oh, this is, by the way, let me go ahead and show this right quick. Uh, her dad, uh, Jamila Lamux, was a Black Panther, but he was white. He was allegedly an informant who is a police officer in Chicago who has the most <laughs> allegations of police brutality. Mm. This is the guy who was supposed to be Black Panther who turned out to be whooping on these black men as a cop. These are a lot of the allegations against him, right? But the big lie, and her using that term, the black ass lie against black men, do you know where the, the Democrats got the big lie from? Hitler. Mm. yes it's propaganda the big lie is a gross distortion or misrepresentation of the truth used especially as a propaganda technique the German expression was coined by Adolf Hitler when he dedicated his 1925 book Mein Kampf to describe the use of the lie so colossal that no one would ever I mean no one would believe that someone could have the impudence to distort the truth so infamous, infamously Hitler claimed that the technique had been used by Jews to blame Germany's loss in World War I on Germany general, who was prominent nationalist political leader in the Weimar War Republic. But look at this. In the 21st century, the term has been applied to Donald Trump's attempts to overthrow the re- uh, elections of the 2020 United States presidential election. In this instance, in this instance, <laughs> in this instance, the term was used to refer to a false claim that the election was stolen through massive electoral and voter fraud. The scale of the claims resulted in Trump supporters attacking the U.S. Capitol. Mm. So, oh, we used it to point out a lie. We we didn't use it the same way. But Hitler is so bad, though. Why would you want to use anything why would you copy that what he, he did? created? Exactly. You think he would come up with your own terms? So basically, what Jamila Lamux did was compare black men to Nazis. I'll, you'll see, understand why I made that point more if you read the article. Like I said, if you if you know about black men or the white people or black people, you've read that article already. You don't even need to read it. She's literally calling, I don't know if this is, she knows this, she's calling black men Nazis to their own, but she's calling black men Nazis the same way Nazis, what Nazis did to Jews is what she's saying black men are doing to black women and, and LGBT. LGBTQ. <laughs> That's that's all they care about, really. The Black Lives Matter. That's that's that was just a dyke organization. I mean, that was just a, <laughs> a, a LBTG dyke organization. organization. That's what it was. Oh man! Shit. Let's tell the truth. I gotta show this too. I'm sorry. This dude right here said, or this person right here said, I'm sorry. I gotta stop calling people dude or woman if I don't know for sure. Okay, hold on. Sorry about that. I keep having a damn pause. All right. Look at this right here. Something alarming is happening. I've been tracking this around the country and I have seen, never seen a judge in modern U.S. history responsible for more people in jail. Just <laughs> Ramona Franklin just hit 500 people in jail at the same time solely because they can't pay cash. And they, <laughs> he showed this and it showed these three judges. These people were tamed per night based on the inability to pay. <laughs> That's terrible. That is crazy. Now, remember when this happened, when all these judges, a female and male, were winning all kind of offices and getting voted in. What's that city or town that had the entire... Texas. Yeah, all the judges were women. Black women. All of them. And we was like, man, they called black girl magic. Mm-hmm. Well, damn. <laughs> this is what you get when you get black girl mad. You get people like, just thrown in jail. I don't think that's necessarily what it is. Maybe they're in districts that are more poverty driven, so these people can't pay more. So they now they obviously they may have more sympathy for them. That's what I'm saying. Now that clearly means they just less likely to show sympathy. They just throw them in jail. But yeah, but somebody <laughs> somebody said this: black judge out here when niggas see them. <laughs> <laughs> they just got to go with two pair of boxers on already. <laughs> you know, people who go to jail say you got to wear two pair of boxers. So they said, when you see a black judge, go home, male or female, just go ahead and put on two pair of boxers because they're sending your ass to jail. And then this, <laughs> this person here, I was laughing so hard at this, I don't know why. 
He said, I told y'all, black men going straight to jail. Just like I said. <laughs> 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 so I, I showed that because this idea that just because you have this certain level of representation from people that look like you. Don't necessarily don't, mean that you're going to get. Yeah. Like the dude who. Uh, get do justice. The DA who handled the uh, Breonna Taylor situation. The black dude who married uh, Schumer's daughter. Not Schumer, I'm sorry. Uh, Mitch, McCall, Mitch McConnell's daughter. The do- damn turtle looking ass <laughs> senator. The dude who's married to Mitch McConnell's daughter who stopped, who did a lot of a stopping the dude. investigation of Breonna Taylor. Yeah, the black dude. So just because somebody look like you don't mean it's always going to come out to actually benefit you. Now, we named this. Uh, <laughs> the big paper. The big- even, did they see that? What I just showed? What? I don't know. The comeback. Yeah, we named this the comeback. Because Hillary Clinton said it's the big, it's the comeback for her. <laughs> Look at this. You you called it. But I this might you. just be them reaching. Testing the waters. Hillary Clinton's 2024 election comeback. Hillary Clinton said it over to the fat lady saying. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris have become unpopular. It may be time for a change candidate. Hillary? The last time we had a change candidate was Obama. Wasn't that his whole slogan? Change. <laughs> change. <laughs> We're going to have change. Martin, come to bed. Oh, yeah. Nah, Malcolm <laughs> on here talking shit. <laughs> I'm about to beat the bow tie off his ass. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> New York Times columnist floats Biden Cheney ticket in 2024. Now, I don't know why the Democrats have come on to cling on to Liz Cheney so much because she's part of the Republican Party who's she's against Trump. Because she's against Trump, even though her daddy was one of the most wicked, she, just dinging. Shoot niggas. <laughs> no, forget the shoot niggas. The shit he did to the... Chi- oh, yeah. The allegations against him that he... By the way, that book got released. I told you about it. It's come, uh, welcome, oh, it's called uh, Transformation of America. Regardless if you believe it's true or not, that she didn't get sued. No defamation lawsuit, nothing. So that tells you a lot. Her daddy is a damn demon. But because this woman was against Trump, they damn near want her to join the Democratic Party, which is funny because it's possible that Joe Manchin might join the Republican Party because the Democrats are kind of pushing him off. He might join the Republican Party. We'll see if Mitch McConnell can pull that off. But this right here to me was more of an attack on Kamala Harris. Yeah. I think they're making the point that Kamala Harris, they know she's going to run for president. She's definitely running for president. So they're like, well, she's not going to win. Exactly. But But let's see, can Kamala Harris beat Biden? She didn't beat him the first time. She's the first person to drop out. So they're like, well, Kamala's going to run. So let's put Liz Cheney with Biden. Who's going to go with Kamala? Well, we heard Michelle Obama. (laughs) I don't know. That's two divas. Uh, We still got Keisha Bottoms. Uh, Stacey Abrams not running. She running for governor again, right? Yeah, she's running for governor of Georgia. So, uh, who's gonna be this? Uh, who's gonna be the wild card? Who this person? I guess that's unexpected. I told you, state. I, I believe that Keisha Bottoms is gonna run for president. I know, but it's it's gonna be somebody else too that's gonna come out. Who? Uh, I don't know. Like that. Dude. Like a celebrity, like a Oprah. No, uh, Oprah. Lord, Obama. Michelle Obama and Oprah, Oprah. on Hold the same on. ticket. What would a ticket Jesus. of Oprah and Michelle Obama? I mean, Oprah not really. People don't fuck with Oprah no more. Black women still fuck with Oprah. I don't think so. If Michelle Obama and Oprah got on a ticket, it's it's done. You think they gonna win? Yes. I don't know. It's gonna be get your ass to the dance polls. All uh, get your get your ass to the dance. <laughs> get your ass to the uh, polls all over again. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Oprah got pulled like that no more. She got it. She still got a little pull. We know definitely for sure Michelle Obama got pulled. I'm trying to think of a pers- possible black man to run for the Democratic Party. I don't see and I, can, I think Cory Bush will probably run again. Cory Booker. I'm sorry, Cory Bush. <laughs> Cory Bush. I'm thinking of the, the woman, uh, Cory Bush, the progressive. Cory Booker <laughs> probably will run. He won't win at Dude, all. I, don't, I, 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 I can't think of a I can't think of a black male candidate. It's like not for the uh, Democrats. Democrats. I think the only one for the Republicans is Tim Scott. Yeah, who ain't? He's really a bachelor. 
Not really. Yeah, well, we, we, hell, we got we got uh, what's his name, Booty Jig in the office. So at this point, right. the whole game has changed. Booty Jig said he got a husband. At this point, the whole game is changed. Hell, hell, you look at places like uh, not is it Germany, Australia? Yeah, those, uh, they they not married. A lot Canada. of them are single. Yeah, yeah, but Canada, France. A lot of those dudes, well, actually, dude in France, he is married. He's married to a woman that was dating him while he was in high school. She's a pedophile. His wife is a pedophile. She yeah. was dating him while he was underage. But anyway, that that would get annoyed. That would, that would get that's getting annoyed. But if, if yeah. this was a male, what did I tell you a couple years ago? They're gonna do it with older women, younger men first, and we're gonna get to that in a second. Now look at this right here. This is Kamala Harris. She had a sit down. Well, she's been asked questions about certain things that make her uncomfortable. Which she was told to ask her this. Exactly. Are we going to uh, to see the same Democratic ticket in 2024? I'm sorry. We are thinking about today. I mean, honestly, that I, I, I know why you're asking. She's seeing drunk right there. In the question, because this is the part of the punditry and the, right. the gossip around places like Washington, D.C. Let me just tell you something. We're focused on the things in front of us. We're focused on what we need to do to, to address issues like affordable child care, what we need to do to ensure... So there have been that, no conversations that, about 2024? Uh, the, the American people sent us here to do a job. And right now there's a lot of work to be done. And that's my focus. It sounds Sincerely. like you're at least familiar with some of the punditry. I don't know if you've heard that there've been some, there's been some talk about a, 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 a Biden-Cheney ticket perhaps in 2024. Did you read that article? I did not. Are we going to... She heard about it. As a matter of fact, she heard about it before it was written. She don't care, though. No, she do care. She know that she's been pushed out. I, I don't. Th I think Kamala's attention was never to run on a ticket with Biden again, though. <laughs> well, that's OK. But if she gets pushed out too quick, then that's Biden saying she's not a good candidate. Hmm? That's not good for her. I live, well, maybe she's already told Biden she does not want to run on a ticket with him again. Yeah. So. Now, this is a question she had to answer on the, the, the vote on the testing. Which, by the way, didn't the CDC just say that the testing is not as useful as they thought it would be? Like, it's okay to test to see if you got it, but once you have your five you got days. The no, this is on CDC said this. this is okay. Out. It went down from 10 days to five days of quarantining, and they told you after you quarantine and you, have, you are asymptomatic, you don't need to test again. Because you can still test positive three months after. So it's like, well, what's the. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is her answering the questions about people that want free, the free testing now. But we're two years into this. Mm -hmm. well, why didn't the administration just go out and, and secure more at home tests? After the Delta surge in the fall, why are we at a point now where folks still can't get tests? But we just ordered. A, 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 I don't have the number in front of me, but millions of tests. We have 20,000 sites where people can go, and I urge people to, you can Google it or go onto any search engine and find out where free testing and the free testing site is available. But, Madam Vice President, the fact that we're still telling people to Google where you can get a test and... Well, you but, but, oh, but come on now. I mean, really, if you, if you want to figure out how to get across town to some restaurant you heard is great, you usually do Google to figure out where it is. So that's simply... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So when it comes to people asking, where do I get tested at? You tell them, damn, just Google it. But when it comes to voting, <laughs> oh, you have to hold people's hands and get them to the hey, poll. Black people. So if I want to know where to get tested, just find it. Damn, it's not hard. You're an adult. But when I want to know how to vote, oh, let me hold black your people, hand and <laughs> walk you to the poll. Black people can't figure out how to go it, to get exactly. go the ahead. voter uh, place to get their stuff. Yeah. That's just what I wanted to say. It's just bullshit. <laughs> I thank you. That was an excellent point. And there's nothing wrong with what she's saying. No. You can Google you can a fucking Google testing site to go to. I mean, they are fucking everywhere. Yeah. Now, I'm telling you, there's probably more in metropolitan cities yeah. Yeah, definitely. versus places, you know, the down rural, south. More rural places. Yeah, but you can Google that shit. But when it comes to the voting, oh, you can't just Google oh. a voting site. We got to make sure oh, the, we, we, hold, we have, have to pick you up from you. your house and take you there if we have to. Hell, we'll 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 put it in every uh, voting in every in front neighborhood. Of front door in their bathrooms <laughs> where they take a shit. They have about to vote. giving people right a mechanism by which they can locate something that they need, something that can help them. But see, this is why she's such a po terrible, terrible politician because everybody is saying this is condescending. 
the, it's mainly the white people, obviously. They're saying this is so condescending. She's just, she just rubs people the wrong way. She has the opposite effect of Obama. The opposite. Obama taught, and if you listen, he'll 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 put Don't a spell on some people. Him. He'll put a spell on you. But stay the fuck away from him. He'll tell you lies and more lies. Sweet lies in this moment. Tell me lies. Tell yeah. me sweet little lies. <laughs> yeah, in this moment. Oh yeah. <laughs> Obama get your ass. That's why you gotta say no. Shut up, nigga. Shut up. Uh, now look at this. This is another situation that's going on. I didn't know the stuff I know now about this woman. You ever remember that woman who was the Baltimore prosecutor that tried to indict those cops who killed Freddie Gray? And people were cheering her on like, yeah, go. we don't care if you broke a couple rules. Indict them. They're wrong. Yeah. Well, she just got hit with indictments. Baltimore top prosecutor Democrat Marilyn Mosby is indicted on charges of perjury and making false mortgage applications for Florida summer homes using COVID relief. Kamala praised her for always doing the right thing. Now it's she's said, a, she, look, she's connected to Kamala Harris, which is not good. You know who else? Multi, I can't get over the multiple not one. homes. You know you can't even be. You gonna go go you gonna get and, and guess what? You and decided Florida, to go Florida. Florida. Everybody like, going to Florida because you know what? No restrictions. You're free. <laughs> so, you are a real uh, American citizen in Florida. So this woman, like I said. All I'm saying is, it's kind of she was connected to Kamala, obviously, who pushed her. She's a former, she's a prosecutor, cop. You know who else pushed her? I have to say it. George Soros funded her. That George Soros old at. He funds everybody. Everybody he wants. Also, because we mentioned that she has connections to Kamala. So if you're connected to Kamala and Biden right now, things ain't going well for you. You know who else didn't want to be connected to Kamala and Biden? You know, like I said, Biden was down in Georgia making that speech about voter yeah. rights. You know who didn't show up? Stacey Abrams. Didn't go. Now, there's one, two things you can say. She said it was uh, uh, it was a uh, scheduling uh-huh. mix up. Now, either one. Like when somebody had a dentist appointment. Exactly. We, we can go <laughs> say no more. Now, either one. Stacey Abrams <laughs> is pissed. She's still pissed with Biden for embarrassing her on mm-hmm. national television that, that she don't want to be around him. She went from having that big Kool-Aid smile <laughs> to the Grinch, boy. To like the Grinch. Like, if she see Biden ass, she put hands if on. she happen to see him before he get in that car, she gonna snatch his ass. <laughs> I'm gonna flatline your ass. <laughs> but listen, either that <laughs> or she don't want to be around them because their poll numbers are terrible. Uh, She probably don't want them putting that bad fucking energy on her, so... The same reason why I think they got Michelle Obama pushing this voter rights thing in, instead of Barack Obama. Because Barack Obama went down to Virginia and it didn't help that candidate. So they're trying to use... Uh, they're trying to use that black girl magic uh, with Michelle that, Obama. Well, and Stacey Abrams trying to stay away from the cancer. black girl magic. Stop. <laughs> and they're trying to... Stacey Abrams trying to stay away from that cancer that possibly is Kamala and Biden. <laughs> <laughs> so you just you just gonna keep going. Ain't you? you gonna keep going. Can't deal with you, man. But uh, oh boy, let's go to the next one. Supreme Court court halts COVID nineteen vaccine rule for U.S. businesses. The Supreme Court has stopped a major push by the uh, Biden administration to boost the nation's COVID nineteen vaccination rate. A requirement that employees at large businesses get a vaccine or test regularly and wear a mask on the job. Well, hell, the health care is still under mandates. I mean, that's that's the biggest part. <laughs> what you mean? That's the biggest part. I mean, you still got uh you still got hospitals, you still got uh senior living. Yeah. Uh uh, rehab places anywhere that states medicaid and medicare so that's a big chunk still that are still having to but it's medical place. it's not private, um businesses with 100 employees it's just medical and stuff like that people that take medicare and medicaid but so it's, people, a, it's only particular industry now a lot of people take that though no only uh businesses that take that okay like if you're a person who's on medicare and medicaid it's not it's, it's just like like you said uh Nursing homes and all that stuff. Retire. I don't know about retirement homes. No, not retirement. Not retirement homes. But yeah, uh, hospice and all that type of stuff. I guess. So ah uh, yeah, it's, it's I guess uh, 
the people who are against the what's call it i'm very happy with that the mandates the mandates who are against the mandates are definitely happy with that for now but it's probably only a half win because they did get the medical people the nurses and stuff who don't want to do it are stuck now it's like okay the supreme court just said yes it is so they're going to come down hard but they just they shut down hospitals they're they bringing in the military to uh act as uh, uh doctors and stuff because they don't have enough staffing so in california right now if you get covid right and go home quarantine for your five days you can come back early as long as you're asymptomatic i don't even know if it's that no more well they but I'm gonna, we're gonna say that we're gonna say that because i'm not even sure it's but at this point it's damn near just stay to work stay at work in california so wait you will fire me for not being vaccinated but if i'm vaccinated and get covid i can i'm good well it's they're claiming it uh it builds up your immune system, doesn't but it? But if I'm <laughs> if I'm vaccinated, that means it do too, don't it? If I'm not, now they're starting to include. Uh, and we're gonna talk about this now. The NCAA releases updated COVID nineteen guidance for winter sports. Who's uh, hosting the winter sport? Huh? Who's hosting the winter sport? This is in the NCAA, so I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, for purposes of winter guidance, the NCA COVID Medical Advisory Group has developed a definition of fully vaccinated that considers both vaccination status and other immunity factors that may impact risk of tier one individuals, including student athletes and coaches. Those considered fully vaccinated include people within two months of having completed the primary series of Johnson & Johnson vaccine, one dose, within five months of having completed the primary series of mRNA Pfizer vaccine, or within a uh, within six months of having completed a primary series of mRNA Moderna vaccine, two doses for both, who have received a booster vaccine if they are beyond two months of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine or beyond five or six months of the mRNA Pfizer or Moderna vaccine, respectively. A per- Listen, a person who is fully, who had a documented COVID-19 infection in the past 90 days is considered the equivalent of a fully vaccinated. Huh? So if I get COVID for 90 days, I'm fully vaccinated. <laughs> I'm trying to make sense of crazy. <laughs> and by the way, also, if I'm within two months of having completed a primary season of Johnson & Johnson, so over two months, I'm not fully you know what? I I don't, you know, I deal with logic. I don't deal with <laughs> these damn people. Look at this right here. COVID loses 50% of ability to infect after 10 seconds in office air. <laughs> what, what's so special about office air? I don't know. The coronavirus loses about 50% of its ability to infect about 10 seconds after it becomes airborne in a typical office environment. According to the new study about how the Delhi bug survives exhaled air, you know what it really is about. You coming home, you coming to work sooner. Yeah. Oh, you can come to work even if you got symptoms still, because it, if you just if you just separate a little bit more, it'll die in ten seconds when you breathe. So you can come to work. You don't have to stay home. <laughs> that's what that's about. Uh, it's a little. It's a little too late now. To be doing all this shit. Speaking of percentages, oh, this, this is them winding down the pandemic, I'm telling you. You should have did this months ago. Now people don't got lazy. <laughs> they don't want to come back to work. They used to getting unemployment. Oh. It's too fucking late now. And they want their stimulus now. Scandal written CNN sees ratings die by and, 90% after 2021 coverage. And hell, it's about to be income tax season. Who oh, the yeah. fuck? Yeah, oh yeah, who, who getting income <laughs> I'm getting one. How many? What what percentage of the population compared to last year will not be getting it? They got it last year. Uh, quite a few. I want to see that percentage because a lot of people are out of work. I wonder, um, people are they gonna deduct some of those income tax because of the money they gave? Well, I they don't have to worry about giving out that many income tax checks this year because ain't nobody <laughs> fucking working. <laughs> Scandal written scandal written CNN sees ratings dive by ninety percent after two thousand twenty one coverage. That's terrible. So last year they had their peak in January after the January sixth uh riots at the white at the Capitol. And uh they had a decent first half and the second half they fell off the earth. 
So basically, the the Jeff Zucker led cable news network averaged just five hundred forty eight thousand viewers during the week of January third, a major drop from a nearly two point seven million viewers for the same week in twenty twenty one. So a hundred thousand people a day watched a twenty four hour news show. A hundred thousand a day. There's YouTubers <laughs> that do those numbers in a couple of hours. Yeah. And this is why, you know, this is why they're so mad with people like Joe Rogan, by the way, because he keeps getting in the news. And by the way, Joe Rogan ain't nothing but um, what they call it. Controlled opposition. I believe so, too. And Robert Malone, Dr. Robert Malone. He is, you know, he's releasing a vaccine. Robert Malone. <laughs> he used his pub to push his vaccine that he got coming out. His pub? <laughs> Publicity. Oh, okay. Him getting kicked off Twitter. And then running around, he went straight to Joe Rogan immediately. Joe Rogan is controlled opposition. There's been accusations that Joe Rogan is CIA for years, though. And the same thing with Alex Jones, since we bring up Joe Rogan. Allegedly, Alex Jones as well. Alex Jones. Well, Alex a, Jones actually flat out came out and said that he he has family members that were. Uh, yeah, CIA and stuff. The CIA yeah. and the CIA actually contacted him and said. You want to join him and all this stuff. You know, you can't join because, you know. Your family has ties with us. And he was yeah. like, no. <laughs> he also has a big, He also. <laughs> you remember uh, Tariq? Tariq Trumpy and Alex <laughs> yeah. Joe. The Illuminati. The Illuminati. <laughs> 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 but uh, Alex Jones also has a business passport with Russia. He has connections to Russia. And I don't mean no Trump type connection. I mean. He, Alex Jones may be a uh, person with a lot of connections to intelligence agencies. Let's just, let's just say that. But, uh, yeah, their viewership is crazy. And, you know, obviously, I would say most of that viewership dropped because of the most of their, their producers came out, a couple of their producers came out as pedophiles, like hardcore pedos. Still coming out. You had Kumo trying to help his brother get away from a damn uh, assault charge. All kind of, Then you got Don Lemon. Who walking up to dudes, scrubbing on his balls and putting in dudes' faces. Like, it's just crazy over there. <laughs> the scandal after scandal. Bah, bah. But you know what's crazier? This now you're about to see MSNB or uh, USA Today get hit. Well, look at this. We're talking about how they're about to start pushing the pedal stuff and how I, I told you years ago they're gonna use older <laughs> women, younger boys first. But look at this. <coughs> Where most of the public thinks pedophilia. When most of the public thinks of public pedophilia, they assume it's synonymous with child sexual abuse. A pedophile is an adult who is sexually attracted to children, but not all pedophiles abuse kids. And some people who sexually abuse kids are not pedophiles. What the f- Who abuse children? How, are you, how do you abuse children and you're not a pedophile? Once again, I can't make sense out of craziness. This is what they called up, down, up is down, left is right, right is wrong. That's they just flipping everything. That's what we're. That's what we're. That's not what we're heading to. That's, that's what, what we're, we're in. into. Yeah. We're already in this. Now. We're already in it. Like the, the fact that you can. Now they deleted the tweet, obviously, but the fact you can even tweet this is like. And this was U.S. Today. U.S. Today that tweeted this. Some, well, somebody obviously one of the interns probably tweeted that. But the so fact you can that add, you can say, how far are we into this? Exactly. How much longer do we got? When we see what they're doing in the school, who they got reading books. Oh, children. they got drag queens reading the fucking books. Now, why do these dudes want to be around kids so much? Because they want to influence them while they're young. What about they taking kids to strip clubs and throwing money at them? The but drag queens. That, but that ain't no scripper. Yeah, the little boys that script up there getting money thrown at them exactly. like he a hoe. Exactly. They done it with that's it's that looks the own from the little boy's name, some little white little boy. They've doing it with him. And it's like, uh arrest him? No. They say, oh well, he wasn't it don't matter. He up there in front of grown ass men. Like the, there's a tip. I don't know the guy's name. There was a club back in the nineties that was really popular in New York. There was a gay guy that ran the club. He ended up going to prison because he killed somebody and chopped them up. Uh we saw that documentary. Yes. He got out of prison. He has a YouTube channel now. And he constantly makes references to killing people and chopping them up. And then he had little boys on his show. Now, he has video where he's admitting that he likes little boys. And YouTube allows him to have a channel. A murderer 
pedophile. Hmm. Yeah. We way further than we know. But they'll block you. Block me for telling the truth, saying I'm spreading misinformation. Cannabis compounds prevented COVID infection in a laboratory study. Ooh. So something that's, this is, this is what they would call a uh, treatment, right? Instead of a vaccine. But we, we've been told yeah. for the past year that treatments aren't what you should be thinking about. You should take the vaccine. Mm-hmm. So why would they allow this to get out? Why would they be okay with you saying that cannabis possibly. Because somebody funding uh, that whatever that operation is. Oh, look. Pfizer enters medical marijuana industry <laughs> with 6.7 billion there cannabis. There you there. go. Oh, that's why we could talk about that now. Yeah. Pfizer got their hands in every pot. Guess oh, we're going to get into this right quick. Okay. There is this company, BlackRock. I'm pretty sure you heard of it. During the height of the pandemic, remember when the prices of housing was skyrocketing and people were saying there's another housing bubble? bubble? Well, they was during the time where they, they were evicting people. Remember the eviction moratorium? We were talking about people that were renters. Obviously, we talked about it from the perspective of black people because black people are the biggest renters. But what we weren't talking about is the people who were also trying to sell them, sell their homes or buy homes. This company, BlackRock, was going around buying everything, buying all type of homes. Well, that's why they had, that's why they had the, the shutdown, had you locked down so they could buy up everything. So they could buy up everything. The same reason why Bill Gates is buying up all this farmland. They didn't want you outside. <laughs> now, BlackRock has a lot of money in Pfizer. Okay, I'm about to go a little further with this. We said we're going to get a little geopolitical. Kazakhstan. We know that America has been going into it with Russia, well, mainly the uh, UN. Is it UN? United Nations. No, not UN. EU. EU. The EU or whatever they call it, UN, whatever it is, they've been going at Russia because of Ukraine. Belarus has been a part of this, and now Kazakhstan has had a, well, at least the president of Kazakhstan said that there was an attempted coup on him recently. Now, in American media, they painted this as a freedom fighter situation where people were trying to overthrow the government for freedom. But this guy said, no, these people were planned. There were snipers. They had uniforms. They were hired to do this. This was an attempted coup. Guess what we found out about Kazakhstan? Kazakhstan has an American bio, <laughs> have a bio lab funded by America in Kazakhstan. You know, like the one in Wuhan? <laughs> Why would America have a Bio lab. Chemical warfare. Right on the border of Russia. Chemical warfare. Also, Putin said that there possibly is going to be a leak from that lab. Yeah. Also, in China right now, the Winter Olympics is coming up soon. There's a hemorrhagic fever going on. Remember last year, or sorry, 2020, when we saw the, the, the film come out of China where they were saying, oh my God. People are just dropping down. Oh, it's so bad. The, the stuff that was coming out of China put fear in people. The same thing is happening now. It's just that on the, for some reason nobody's talking about it. A hemorrhagic fever is going on. So I asked the question, right before that spread of COVID, there was a military Olympic Games in China. Around a couple months later, COVID hit the world. So right now we're about to have the Olympic Games and winter, the Olympics in China. Is it possible that in three, six months, we say, oh, my God, we were so stupid. Why did we allow? <laughs> why did we allow our people to go to China and bring back this virus? It ain't going to be three to six months. And then we have what's happened in 2020 all over again with a new virus. Guess who's not going to that Olympics? North Korea. And, the, and in the bio, bio lab in Kazakhstan, what if they say, because Putin said it might be a leak, what if they say, look at this, there's a leak in Kazakhstan, it was Russia. They, they knew that it was going to leak, they knew what they were going to do, so they put it in people's mind that it leaked when really they're the ones who did it. So they're going to say, is it possible that they could say Russia set off a new uh, bio-warfare, or is it possible we could have another leak from China? And then we have what happened in 2020 all over again. One it's a, of them. It's a thought. <laughs> it's going to be one of them. So then we move on to 2030. Well, you're not supposed to own anything, Black Rock, and you're going to love it. 
Everything's going to be bought up, farmland. And you've gotten so used to lockdowns now where we, we can start having um, a climate change lockdowns. Oh, we need a year to let the earth recuperate. It's locked down for a year. A lot of things coming. I'm just throwing stuff out there with that. And what comes with a cannabis situation, there was a guy who became a millionaire recently off of uh, marijuana and people was asking the question, why is it he can become a millionaire off weed when there are hundreds of thousands of people in prison right now because of weed? Then we got Jay-Z says feds refused to release Valon Valley uh, who served 14 years for weed because he stole chicken. Now the story is he was in prison. He had chicken, you know, in his lunch. He snuck some back to his room and that's considered stealing. And now he, they won't let him out. He's in jail for they say weed. So he probably was a drug dealer. Mm-hmm. Is that fair? Pfizer can put 6.7 billion into weed. All these people are becoming millionaires off weed, <laughs> but he's in prison for weed. Oh no, he definitely shouldn't be in prison for weed because in in most states, um, smoking marijuana is not a crime. So that's why I'm kind of confused why they haven't released the people that are, um, in prison for marijuana charges. Yeah, it's in, it's kind of strange. But, but they'll say, well, it was a crime. It back was a crime then. then, so yeah. So, all right, let me show y'all. Because with Joy Reid, we'll see how long she's around after this. But Joy Reid got a new do again. She's trying to put, she's wow, trying to ain't got on red lipstick, got her eyes done. All right, so Joy Reid made some comments about what she thinks should happen to people who are unvaccinated. Now, by the way, you see this woman here who's supposed to be a doctor. She has a Fauci shirt on. Yep. Once again, they've turned so they've turned politicians into celebrities. Like she, he's, he's she's a, a fan leader. She's a fan, not he's a colleague. He's a man who's a politician who I respect. He's a you are a fan of him. Watch this. Let's talk about what other countries are doing, because at some point I feel like people who are willfully unvaccinated, fine, don't get vaccinated, but they need to start to pay a little bit more of the cost of what this is doing to our system. Uh, there are fines that, that are uh, that are levied in places like Germany. Germany has stopped paying for the tests. The vi- America don't pay for the uh, test. Virus tests for people who choose to be unvaccinated. They've ended. Qu- or should I say they're not uh, as available as they are in other countries? Quarantine pay for those without vaccinations. IKEA, the company, is slashing sick pay for unvaccinated UK workers. If you are a smoker, insurance companies can charge you more. They can charge you a premium of up to 50%, and you have to put that on the form when you apply for insurance. At some point, don't we have to make people who are just saying, I'm willing to take the risk to be unvaccinated, take the risk for me and take the risk for everyone I come in contact with. Shouldn't they have to pay more into the system because they are collapsing our health system? They're the- Remember when I said a, long, a while ago that they're going to start blaming unvaccinated people for the rise in ta- possible inflation? They're going to say it's your fault that we have in shortages. They're going to say it's your fault that the medical uh, cost is going up. They're going to blame you for the economy being shut down, everything. Joy Reid was the one who said she would not <laughs> get the vaccine. <laughs> she didn't give a damn if it was Trump uh, or, or she didn't give a damn if it was Joe Biden. She wasn't taking no vaccine, so she need to shut the fuck up. So what she's saying is unvaccinated people should be taxed. The ones in the ERs. They're taking it up. If you have a stroke or you have a heart attack, you can't get in the ER because they're taking up all the beds. So shouldn't they have to pay more? That's what you got right now. That's why her ass getting off TV. I've seen people get on night television shows and making the point that if you're unvaccinated and you go to the hospital, you should be left to die. I've seen that said by late night TV shows. These people are, it's a psychosis. And so there, there are many um, possible interventions that we can impose on the people who would choose to continue to choose to be unvaccinated, uh, I- increase insurance premiums, um, creating uh, a, a list or a, a triage list. So when people come to the hospital, maybe one of the first questions we ask is, um, are you vaccinated? And then that will direct yeah. them towards a certain type of care because we already do that. I can guarantee you when a patient comes in shortness, shortness, shortness of breath, like my dad, 
He got hospitalized three times in the past two years with shortness of breath, but related to his congestive heart failure causing pulmonary edema. The first question they ask almost every time is, are you a smoker? Um, I mean, yeah. he's not, and it didn't uh, direct the care. But these are there are several things that we can do. But I'm not giving up on the people that remain un vaccinated, Joy, we still need to get them vaccinated. I think we need to find other measures uh, and mandates and other other measures that to, to really get them to get vaccinated. Yeah. That's really a, a, good, a major, uh, Joy. Mandates. I mean, look, I, I, I've given up. You hear that? She said, mandates, I've given up. These people are under the eye. They're still under the impression that if I make you get vaccinated, I'm a good person. If you're not vaccinated, you're a bad person. And we're going to end with this and why these companies can lose 90% of their audience and still be on television. <laughs> we showed this before. We're going to show it again. This is why. It is brought to you by Pfizer. CBS Health Watch sponsored by Pfizer. Anderson Cooper 360. Brought to you by Pfizer. ABC News Nightline. Brought to you by Pfizer. Making a difference. Brought to you by Pfizer. CNN Tonight. Brought to you by Pfizer. Early start. Brought to you by Pfizer. Friday night on Aaron Burnett out front. Brought to you by Pfizer. This week with George Stephanopoulos is brought to you by Pfizer. This weather report brought to you by Pfizer. Today's countdown to the royal wedding is brought to you by Pfizer. And now a CBS Sports update brought to you by Pfizer. Meet the press. Data download. Brought to you by Pfizer. Pfizer. This portion of CBS This Morning sponsored by Pfizer. On how to find the hidden sugars in the American family diet. Sponsored by Pfizer. Mm. <laughs> and that's why they say the things they say. But anyway, man, we've gone on long enough. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this is going to be a pretty long one. <laughs> Y'all have to take your time listening to this one. If you made it this far... Make sure you leave a comment and let us know. We really appreciate the support. All right, man. But uh, thank y'all for viewing the video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share the con share it. And uh, y'all be safe, man. All praise to the Most High and peace, man.